Did yeah, he texts he text us because that's this is what the problem is. This is what <laughs> HB Double T's problem is, right? When Big Daddy Donk is running late and he sends a text message 623, going to be late. Well, guess what? HB Double T has to do extra work. I don't know. It's unfortunate. K Pac, K Pac, you pulling up videos? <laughs> I'm pulling up videos. I don't Hands know how up. To do that. Hands yeah. up. Right? I'm back here. <laughs> KG Scott Hall, you doing anything over there? No, it all falls to HB Double T. Hey, yo. And let me find out that Big Big Donk has been talking to other podcasts. He's going to leave. Uh oh. KG oh. Scott Hall. Did you jump in ship? Are you guys jumping ship on me? You're going to leave me all alone with the Wizards? Is this like fucking WCW all over again? Oh, no. I would never. <laughs> Yeah, that's what fucking Xbox said. Xbox came back. He yeah, he did come back. Yeah. But he left me. <laughs> for, for, for he a brief left me with the fucking true. Portuguese man of war. Yeah, but you know what you did? <laughs> you fucked over Hunter. Oh. Did I? Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit. Did I fuck over Hunter? You fucked yeah. over Hunter. He's in a good spot now. No I'm the you. guy that fucked the boss's daughter while he was fucking China. Yeah, I and then did he got that. You, and then he got you a job running developmental. Right. HB Double T doesn't run developmental. <laughs> HB Double T's Mr. WrestleMania, the showstopper. Oh. So now HB Double T's got extra work to do. HB Double T was busy around here, putting away his laundry, vacuuming. Oh, it looks like uh, Brundo's going to carry your bag, so that'll be nice. Well, that means Brundo's the next Triple H. <laughs> I want to see Brundo in a hog pen match. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Uh, half the people that listen to this fucking show should be in a hog pen match. <laughs> a lot of hogs. Oh my god! <laughs> Inner city Disgusting. sweat hogs. <laughs> oh, Rick Rude reference. Nice, nice. So HP Double T's fired up. I got words for everybody tonight. I hope you fucking. I don't know. I don't know how long I can do this shit. I will. <laughs> I'm not wearing these fucking gloves this whole show because I couldn't get this fucking red dye off my hands last week for like three days. <laughs> Good night, dye. Anna? Three fucking days. That's why it's a punishment, man. At, it's a punishment. You know it's a punishment? The small hat that you sent me. <laughs> no, it's a punushment. HB Double T is a punishment. I'll give you a punishment, KJ Hall. <laughs> hey, <yo. laughs> that was wasn't bad. <laughs> then I had to that? fucking put away my laundry. Can't forget to wear this fucking dumb t-shirt. <laughs> team HBK, right? Is that what it's like? Also, this team is Sean, stupid period. Team Sean. Period. Also, he's not here, but, but look, punishment for last year needs to be done by April 29th. We're not waiting until fucking July when we're halfway through this year's picks. I, HB Double T, am throwing it down for Big okay. Donk. Whenever Big Donk shows up, whatever he's doing, he better not be talking to the turnbuckle throwbacks. He better not be trying to jump ship to the Apron Bump podcast. I'm watching. He better not be going Gorilla Brain. <laughs> watching you brain. down there, K-Pac. I'm not having any of this. You're building a brand behind your back. Nobody's leaving me alone with fucking Aldo Montoya. I can't quit you. Shitty fucking Just Incredible. <laughs> I'm still 50-50 on him nowadays. Oh, you are you 50 50 on him? No, he's a thief. He's a piece he's a of thief, shit, I guess, but piece of shit. One of our I, one of the, the WrestleCon memories came up with him talking to Nigel McGuinness at our table. That's always pretty cool. Yeah, but it was all fucking lies because he's a liar. Yeah, he's a liar and he's a thief. Takes advantage of his fans. That's he the doesn't kind of ever he give us extra fucking breadsticks ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I think extra, he would have shown extra. up at WrestleCon with extra breadsticks for us. <laughs> Never-ending salad, at least. A big bag of salad. Something. When he said he was going to be there, it meant he was catering the event. <laughs> this apron bump, he's fucking poking the bear. HB Double T doesn't like it. I see that. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, you'll that's never the, get that uh, book. The, that was no, the Just Incredible book. He fell for it, too, like you, K-Pac. And the mask. The whole and fucking the mask. Thing. I would have sent you my underwear for fucking $6. <laughs> I sent you my wife's underwear for 8 Yellow underwear? That's what he fucking wore on his face. Don't yeah, say that. Don't say that too many times. People will jump on that deal. <laughs> that is a good deal. <laughs> People will jump on that deal. The creeps in the wrestling community will jump all over that deal. 
Bro, I'll go down to the Walmart. I'll buy a fucking hundred pairs of yellow underoos. I'll fucking lay them on my wife's side of the bed while she's at work all day to get her scent on them. Throw them in the wash. <laughs> put some hat? fucking Febreze on it. There you musk. go. <laughs> yeah, you want? I'll put my musk on it. Matt HP musk. double T musk. Oh, the double T musk. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Big week, right? WrestleMania. So we got hey. a lot talked about. We're going to talk about WrestleMania nights one and two. We're going to talk Hall of Fame, NXT. You know, even with it being WrestleMania week, AEW somehow finds a way to capture headlines. So some AEW stuff to talk about. There's some Ring of Honor to talk about. Dark Side of the Ring last week. We're, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. 50 minutes of Harley Race being, you know, a troublemaker and then uh, 30 seconds of his wife saying, hey, I used to beat the shit out of me once in a while and then just leave us with that cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's he's fun. a good guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, he liked to fucking drink a bottle of Jack. Sometimes he smacked me up. Good night, everybody. <laughs> well, see you Wait. later. <laughs> what? I, let's say what now? Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun. T-Donk is running late. I can't even, what time is it? Oh, okay, it is 6.55. I had to, can't, you know. You know. Those are your Eclipse classes. <laughs> yes, yes. The Eclipse, this, these, you know, I had a whole fucking day planned. I was going to go to the 2 o'clock Yankees game. I was going to get fucking annihilated, just show up, really channel my inner HP double T. Wait, what? Right? Then, then they moved the Yankees game to 6 o'clock because okay. of the Eclipse, the Eclipse. Listen to me. If you're fucking dumb enough to look at the goddamn sun during the eclipse, fucking go blind, you dumb fucking motherfuckers. Dun, dun, soft, dun, dun, dun. Ah, you, where ah. were you? Where were you? Were you talking with the Apron Bomb podcast? Were you re restructuring a new contract? T Donk, Big Donk? Listen, man, it's that time of year, and the draft is coming up. I have to, I have to expand my horizons. I got to put myself out there. God, if you were helping your fucking 24-year-old kid with his homework, I'm going to fucking strangle you. That's not very I nice. Knew it. I what knew it. I knew. What, are you looking for guaranteed money? <laughs> There's some things that I'm looking for. I don't like to put my negotiations out there in public, but, you know. Oh, don't apron bumps doing it. He's just saying I send him a very lucrative offer. Yep. Yeah, Walker. But uh, good job, Double T. Uh, I'm fired up, man. You know, Tina, the Big Daddy Donk doesn't show up, and HB Double T's got all the extra work to do, and I don't like it. What does it say? It says Hulkamania since 1984. Estimated 1984, dude. You know the Hulk's great. I was going to say, why did you go estimated on <laughs> it? A of whatever. I'm, <laughs> I'm an idiot. You know Hulk the Hulkster. Uh, Stunata Bubbies uh, rubbing off on me. I'm surprised the Hulkster was selling black T-shirts. Oh, boy. Right, let's, let's go. Let's go. A main priority is masturbation, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I will call to the cockmaster, Jimmy Fart. <laughs> Jimmy Fart's the cockmaster. All right, write that down, too. All right, well, Tony's back. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, and we got so much wrestling to talk about. I'm very excited about this. Um... Do I, do I, I already have the intro queued up, Tony. I did it all because I didn't know. But you're the best, man. I appreciate that. That's Can right. You... HB Double T is the fucking best. It's Mr. WrestleMania, the showstopper, bitch. How many pills you take today, sir? So many fucking pills. Well, I was going to go to the Yankees game and get all fucked up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, then really show up like Shawn Michael style. This is a WrestleMania podcast, but... You know, fucking everybody's in the eclipse. So now I had to fucking, you know, bang a couple Mexican bras across the street. And now I'm here. How HK. many kids do you think went blind today? Hopefully all of them. <laughs> yeah. HK, what are the what are the all what are them. the first four letters in the phrase? So many. S O M A. S O A. <laughs> Take a bunch of those, that might, did you? <laughs> I had my guy Louis Spicoli pick me up some <laughs> big bag of them from Mexico. <laughs> no, no, no packages from uh, Mr. Zahorian. No, no, we're we're cycling out right now. Come on, if you all three of you jump ship, I'm gonna have to bulk up. Wait, who else? Wait, everybody. I guess everybody's contracts are up, huh? Well, I'm I'm assuming, right? If Big Daddy Donk is running late, then he's in cahoots with K-Pac and KJ Hall up here. So I got I got things to worry about. You're going to leave me and Brendan with fucking PJ Palaco. It's going to be the new Shining Wizards. It's going to be atrocious. That's a click. 
<laughs> Atrocious, a terrible click. <laughs> Fucking click. PJ Polacco. Yeah. Good click. Brun- Brunda's going to show up, giant fake nose, long girly hair. <laughs> PJ's going to show up with his underwear on his face, and that's going to be the new Shining Wizards. But you guys are off fucking being kings of the world. Well, in fairness, Kate is uh, recruiting me for a new project she has, you know, so I haven't decided if I'm taking the offer yet or not. Yeah, well, good. have fun double dipping in my sloppy seconds, buddy. <laughs> well, she's got two very good reasons for me to join her side of the stable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, HB Double T knows what you're talking about. Picking up what I'm putting down, aren't you there? Heartbreak. I'm picking them up and I'm putting them in my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's how HB Double T rolls. Ladies, if you got them, I want them. <laughs> Fuck yeah, line them up, baby. That's right. It ain't the short, the best ride, but there ain't there no line. I'll take it. Let's do it. <laughs> wow. Any of them? I don't care. I'll go hogging a wrestle. I went hogging all WrestleMania weekend. Are you kidding me? I go hogging. Hogging. <laughs> That's HB Double T her. cleaned up. He cleaned up across the board. If you <laughs> didn't wear deodorant and your fucking whale tail was hanging out, I was on you like white on rice. Ready <laughs> ah. down, go with a hogging all weekend. <laughs> Sunk my claws into them ladies, you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah, dude. Good for you. Good oh for you. God. Hey, you know what? You take so many somas after a while and it doesn't matter. You can't feel anything, you can't see anything. It's got to stick it where it's wet. I could have been with dudes. I could have been with chicks. Could have been with a fucking mailbox. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> any 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 necessity for the uh, clothespin on the nose, or was everybody fresh? Oh, everyone was great. You know what? I'm a real HB Double T's a real man. We don't use clothespins. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. All right, I kiss you where it smells funny. I don't. You care. got a, you got a little flavor saver going, or not today? I took a shower today. Oh, any deodorant? HB Double T's got to wa- HB Double T's got to wash the stink of WrestleMania weekend off of him before he does this podcast. Deodorant, deodorant, always. HB Double T wears deodorant. I'm like that <laughs> heathen, that heathen you guys do the show with. You ever run into Shining Wizards Matt in the bathroom back there? You ever Sometimes, there? like two, like two ships in the night. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got the cat in there with him. It's weird. Yeah, well, you you found out before we did, I guess. So what HB Double T is for. Well, we're going to talk some WrestleMania. We're going to talk some NXT, Hall of Fame, Ring of Honor, AEW, so much more. It's all here next. Episode 684 of the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Oh, Leah, all right, yeah. How do you like me now? Hit the button. All right, oh. Oh, should I take us away? The following is a presentation of the Shining Wizards Network. Broadcasting live in high definition video and available on all podcasting and streaming platforms. Follow us on social media at Wizards Podcast. Check out our merchandise at merch.shiningwizards.com. Do your Amazon shopping at amazon.shiningwizards.com. And become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash wizards podcast. And now it's time for the Shining Wizards. You are tuned in live to episode number 684 of the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. It's about time that the boys finish their story of WrestleMania 40. So let's take it around the world, live on social media, wherever you go on all the streaming and podcasting platforms. Join us for some wrestling talk. And talk about wrestling. Completely around the world. Tony. 
HB Double T. The handsome Kevin. And KJG. Boys, I know it was a few minutes late, but it's it's nice to be back in the groove, you know, joining everybody, start of the show, checking out my man HB Double T, seeing the two Kevins on my right. It's good to be back. All right. Well, it's it. good to good have, have you back. back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What is your, uh, what's that say? Tony Dude. Okay. It's Tony, dude. Sorry, I can't. The glasses. <laughs> look, I don't. I don't know if you heard the starter show. I can't wear these gloves for the whole show again. Why? Are they starting to stank. It took me three days to get the red ink off my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best for HP Double T. The hat, red man. Ink. You kill him. The hat actually hurts the most. More than the earrings. Yeah, the earrings are fine. I okay. may have dropped one. Drop one down the sink before. Well, you got 17 more to go. Oh, there's a fucking zillion of them in there. But yeah, the hat, the small hat hurts my head because I like, I don't, I, I don't, it doesn't fit my head. So I have like all this weird hair hanging out. Let, let, me, let me ask you this. Yeah. Have you tried dangling these earrings from any other body parts? No. Nothing like they're, on the navel? Nothing on the scrot? No. They're nothing under the, fore, under the foreskin? No, ew. Scrot ring. Why would a yeah. man, why would a man do that? Because you're HP Double T. Yeah, but HP yeah. Double T, I didn't see no scrote rings in the Playgirl spread. <laughs> so, all right, so you, so you took a look. What is 2024, you know? <laughs> look at everything, Kevin. Where have you been? We talked about Davey Richards' dong a couple years ago when he <laughs> his, his, his nudie photos got leaked with that hammer. Matt, let me ask you this. Or HP Double T, I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Do you have a cowboy hat in your house anywhere? No. Oh. We have. I don't think we've reached that stage of HB Double T yet. All right, just throw it out there because maybe if uh, you have a size hat that fits you, a cowboy hat could also be HB Double T because he was HB Double T in the cowboy hat. Hey HK, write that down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and maybe gotta... just gonna throw this out there: if there is some kind of Halloween thing that could go over both my eyes where it looks like I'm a cyclops but I can still see out of it I'm just throwing that out there all right huh all right I'll write that down too so you know he's turning he's a cyclops oh and and scrote rings too oh yeah no I'm rings. not no I can't put my scrotum on YouTube no but we'll know it's there it'll make us laugh yeah you know I'm not no because there is no <laughs> proof that HBK had scrote rings uh pierce your nutsack yeah come on just do it bro yeah, I need to get S C R O T E scroty. I'm not. There will be no. Everything's gonna be above the nipples. Well, Put them on your nipples. Yeah. No, I'm not taking my fucking shirt off. You don't have to. We'll see them through your shirt. Yeah. No, you won't. You can't even see nice. my fucking nipples now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Tony, we we being me, I decided. We... Uh, punishment for this year's picks need to be in by the 29th of april you have three weeks to figure out what our punishments are we're not waiting till fucking july or august when we're halfway through the season no 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 shit or get off the pot right we can't do this we can't wait fucking drag this out people forget brendan says you don't have the balls for a scrot ring (laughs) scrot worst keep carrying my bags brundo (laughs) see who gets a scrot ring (laughs) Hey, I saw Phil Reyes in the chat. Hi, Phil. Hello, Philip. <laughs> HB Double T says, what's up? <laughs> I got, that's it. I got nothing. <laughs> I have like six potential names. HB Double T already. never feuded with Bundy, so I ain't got a problem with Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, you feuded with Vader. I mean, you know. No, I think Shawn Michaels and Bundy had a match. I think what, that one match bit. is not a feud. Uh, the corporation, the million dollar corporation era. Either here, I'm taking these gloves off. <laughs> I don't want red hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't get them off. You, now you see, if oh, HB Double T had some red hands, maybe he was dipping in a couple of. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Aunt Florence was visiting some of the uh, strange that you got into over the weekend. Ah, uh, the old rusty coin purse. Fuck yeah, dude. Do, do they smell like copper? <laughs> How do they look? <laughs> so you you could already see they're starting to get red. I didn't have them on for more than 15 minutes. Did, did, uh, did they smell like pennies? 
No, they smell like whatever's the inside of these gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor savers. It's a pain. I gotta wash all this shit too once a week. It's a pain in the ass. Oh air. God, laundry! Heaven forbid. Well, I was doing laundry when I got your text that you were out there uh, playing the field of other podcasts. So I had to <laughs> quickly pull up my opening number because you were running late again. Two weeks ago, you didn't even bother to show up. Last week, you were on vacation. Are you talking to Midnight Mike? Are you working on a deal to go elsewhere? I need to know. Listen, man, he's been covering them fucking yellow jackets or whatever that baseball team is. Are you going to the are you going to be you, Justin and Vince, starting a new podcast? What's going on? Uh, over that here? would depend. I, they, those guys haven't done an episode in like a month. It's true. Unless they're waiting to sign me. Maybe I'm like the deal maker. So I feel like you've been doing a lot of shady shit behind my back. Listen, man, not everybody in the Discord's correct about Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Tony. Let me ask you this. Let's t- we're going to take you back to last week. You were at uh, Hogan's Hangout at the beach shop. Why? And maybe we talked about it last week, but you were kind of still riding high on, you know, dapping the Hulkster and having a little bit of discord with him. Um, why did you choose uh, th- that song? Because it was the only thing that I wanted to get on the list. The DJ was like, if you don't get on the list now, it's going to be a long night. So I was like, all right, I got to get on the list. It was the only thing that I remember that I was halfway decent at singing in rock band. So that's what I went with. And completely forgetting about that whole middle part. So I stood there like a fucking fat jackass <laughs> for like 45 minutes. Don't so then I started, I started talking up the holster going, I've seen this man slay giants. <laughs> Aren't the words on the screen? Yeah, but there's no words in the middle part. Like during the solo? Yes, that's a call. Of, okay, that's a breakdown. I liked it. Yeah. That was a, a good opportunity to take your shot with the Hulkster. That's what I did. I put him I over. I like it. I put the Hulkster over, dude. Oh, by the way, side note, this really made me fucking laugh going back to our talk about pasta mania. My son ordered the chicken Alfredo, and it came with a side of bread. <laughs> I couldn't stop fucking laughing. I'm like, it's like fucking old habits never die, Hulk. <laughs> Get that bread, brother. But no, no Hulkaroos. No Hulkaroos. No Hulk use. It was it was fettuccine. Which, by the way, if you ever have a chance to go to Hogan's Hangout, the food is actually really good. Okay. We got to chatting with the waitress, and she said the chef there makes everything fresh. Nice. Everything is fresh. Even the Alfredo sauce that was on the chicken Alfredo, fresh made. Nothing from a can, nothing from a store, everything. And it was good food, man. We ate there twice. That's how good the food was. Do you think they are trained not to say that we (laughs) use everything from a can? I don't know. I mean, she, she, Jennifer, I'll put her over. Jennifer from Hogan's Beach. Hogan's Hogan's wife? No, not that Jennifer. He's got the way, dude. As a waitress? So, So here's the inside scoop. Armed security with the Hulkster and his crew. Like, that's the way they roll. Hulkster comes in. They got it. They got somebody there who's packing like five minutes before he gets there. Well, he yeah, comes he in. F- there's like three different dudes with heat, like just in case shit goes down. We can have Missy Bruf- Beefcake attacking him. <laughs> Missy <laughs> Beefcake. Jesus Christ. She sucks. All right. Well, oh, you're yeah. back. You're back. You uh, sung with the Hulkster. Fuck yeah, he gave me a fist bump. It was awesome. I saw that. Yeah, that was nice. Told me my shirt had mystical powers, dude. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have is this the same shirt? No, I this is the uh the black and gray variety. Yeah. I was wearing the uh the red on yellow. All right. Or the yellow on red. Yeah, the opposite. Did you feel like you had mystical powers? Yes. Hmm. How mystical were you? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't expecting to win the championship, so I didn't stick around for the award ceremony at the end. Ah, but... so do you know who won? I have no idea. Well, you could have won. Oh, I could have done a lot of things. <laughs> Winning one of those championships was not one of them. Wow, you Come were on. the winner. I, I got off the stage. I'm like, how'd I do? The kid's like, you did fine. Like, it was that bad. He goes, no, you did fine. You had fun. That's all that matters. You know what? No. no with all due respect, fuck your kid, okay, man? I don't see him. <laughs> I don't see him getting up there singing. Uh, Kev, write that down. <laughs> all right. I don't see him getting up there singing. No, but... I, 
He don't know shit anyway. He watches all this fucking stupid shit on YouTube. He probably knew who the fucking guy was in the Prime bottle last night. Yes, he knew who I Show Speed yeah. was. I don't know who the fuck that is. Nobody told that guy not to say fuck a million times on live can't TV either. Yeah, all right. Can we, like, do we have any any other, uh, you know what? No, Kevin's I want to get into I, it. I want right. to get into it, man. Wrestling is so much more fun when we all watch wrestling. The text messaging was so much fun last night during night two. Um, Naito. Naito, hey. <laughs> But uh, fucking WrestleMania night but two night event <laughs> night one, uh, Philadelphia. Uh, we got. I don't think it really dawned on me. Uh-oh. Right, this is the first ever WrestleMania without Vince McMahon. Yeah. Oh, they told us right. Oh, they, they made didn't... a point to tell us that. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Listen, I don't know who this guy is. Is he related to you? He says you don't actually watch wrestling live. I did not watch night one or night two as they aired. No. Yeah, but who gives a shit? Who, who? Why is this guy throwing you under the bus? I don't know who this Matt know. Garifo I don't know. is. I don't, is I don't know him. I don't want to know him. I don't know who he is. I want him, <laughs> wow. I want him out. <laughs> yeah. Hit the bricks. Wow. Well, that would explain why Kevin wasn't involved in the text messaging last night. I was avoiding spoilers at all costs. I don't blame you. Yeah, do a wrestling podcast. It'll be good for you. <laughs> Sorry. He watched. Did you yes. watch? Yeah, I watched. watched everything. I watched Ring yeah. of Honor. I watched WrestleMania. I watched Stand and Deliver. I watched Dark He watched Side. a lot more than I did. Watched it all, baby. Watched Dynamite. Can also, DNA. what's with the... They were acting like it was fucking 30 degrees out. Like, girl, fucking panic. I know. I got so tired yeah, of like, with the wind chill, it's 40. Who gives a shit? And you then want the company in Philly. And then you find out later the fucking ring area was heated anyway. Who gives a shit? Yeah, they did the same shit when they were here at the Meadowlands. You fucking they did sissy, the same shit. pussy ass fucks. <laughs> pussy ass fucks. Yeah, man. <laughs> fucking, it's a heated ringside area. Michael Cole's crying, you bitch. He you always fucking cries, dude. piss your pants like Jim Ross. Be a real fucking professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep you warm, you yeah. shitbird. Well, for a, anyway. a second, but yeah. What? I still keep you warm for a second, but uh, and I just gotta, gotta keep doing colder. it. Yeah, yeah. pissing increments, little gotcha. little ones, little sh- little, little guys, shooters. gotcha, yeah, little shooters. Gotcha. Well, the other the other big argument was that this this WrestleMania was booked under Vince, so they really didn't have a chance. And apparently, Nick Khan is looking to push WrestleMania toward the end of April, perhaps beginning of May, ah. going forward, Ooh. which would make more sense. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean. Historically, it's like end of March, beginning of April. But you know, if uh, if the weather if the weather dictates a change in history, whatever. Right, and if if they're consistently going to be doing the outdoor shows, which they've been doing for a while now, that it might make more sense to to push it back, unless you're going to do like a dome show, like the rumored Minneapolis uh, show next year. So it uh, totally makes uh, with the expansion of every single like live event that they do, the PLE, and the number that they do, pushing WrestleMania back. Me until this thought just crossed my mind, the 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 length of time between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania would that play in a factor? I was just it? thinking that that's a that's a great point. Um, maybe we get two fast lanes and, a, and an elimination chamber in between. <laughs> great balls of fire! Fuck yeah! <laughs> no. So I like the idea in theory, or they just have to revert to just doing dome shows if they want to keep it in March, or go to places of like good climate, like hot temperatures and stuff. That, somebody said it was raining before the main event of night one. Was that the case? It didn't. Somebody know. said no, no, rain like passed hasn't, through. Hasn't fucking stopped raining in the last week. So yeah, it's true. it was raining fucking rained here an hour ago. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't know, but the shit was fucking caught. They had the, the, they, they planned for the shitty weather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the ring was covered. Yeah. yeah. You know, it never rained straight, but. That's a great point. <laughs> that five, five, I will have the fucking awning on the pizza truck. People are like, oh, it'll keep you dry. I'm like, yeah, it never rains fucking straight, stupid. <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever rains just straight. Get a bigger awning, bro. Fucking suck a dick. Well, I'm trying to All be right? helpful. No, you just offer me like... says, yeah, I offered you a dick. To suck that would also be helpful, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please, maybe. Yes. You might like it. <laughs> like, the, the awning only... <laughs> 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 yeah, Mr. Hall, what do you got for me? 
I mean, obviously the awning covers like the most important aspect of WrestleMania, which is the performers and the actual. Yes. But but like, you still have like so much electronics and, and and other people involved in the production of the you show. You don't think they plan for this? I nope. believe they do. I, of course they do. But like you saw at the end of the show when like Cody was like hugging all those guys, they're not wearing pop. They're not wearing anything that's like protective over the cameras or anything like that. Well, it was great- raining last night. You said it was raining before the show, no. before the main event of night of night one. L- last night was night two, big guy. You with us today? No, I what thought. What difference does it make, though? Who says that it wasn't a lock that it couldn't possibly rain on night two? And it I don't didn't, know. But it didn't rain on night two. It rained on it, night one. But it's did it easy rain to on say night that one? Now. Did did it rain on night one? I don't fucking know. I don't <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> That's really all I wanted to know. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. Can I look up old weather? By the way, TKO Holdings is uh, back on a upward climb, which is very nice. So, Good. if you wrote uh, out, if you wrote out the storm that was the Vince McMahon nonsense from a month or so ago, well, didn't Endeavor shit. just buy like uh, another boatload of stocks from Vince, diluting his ownership status like a whole bunch more? Pretty oh, sure. he's gonna sell more today. Yeah, pretty sure that just happened today. Yeah, I, ju- I just saw it pop up over here. He's going to sell another $311 million. My question is, what the fuck is he doing with all this money? <laughs> <laughs> Whores! NDAs. <laughs> Lots of glass tables, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to shit. <laughs> I want you to have diarrhea! <laughs> She's gonna shit. She's gonna shit. <laughs> Have some White Castle, damn it. Then send all the photo evidence to Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I wasn't there, Vince. <laughs> hey, somebody had corn. I like corn. The pictures. It's off the cob. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Vince, I eat my corn long ways. <laughs> so uh night one kicked off with uh Rhea Ripley taking on Becky Lynch. Um it really hammer hammered home that Becky was sick. Uh she's out there touching all those human beings during her book signing, so she gets what she deserves. Was she really sick or was this kind of make her feel like in, in a loss that I mean you know, I- I, like I a Bret know. Hart kind of thing with the Mountie, and like he really wasn't sick. But why even bring it up then? Like, what's the is it to make to... her seem like sympathetic? That's why. I see what you're saying, and it probably just doesn't hurt her as much in the loss. Even though I don't think it would have hurt her anyway if they never even brought it up. Right. But the fact that they kept bringing it up kind of made they're a lot more like Shooty Magooty now lately. So like. I feel like what they say is like nine times out of ten, it's going to be true. So she probably was sick, probably embellished. Scott George, write that down. Shooty Magooty. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't have funsy McGunsies. <laughs> you will suck my meat. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Hulkster. You will suck my meat. Huh. You will oh. drop to your knees and you will say, please me, Mr. Hogan. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Mr. Hogan. Mr. Hogan, of course. I will double fist you with both fists and you will scream to the heavens. <laughs> wow. The Hulkster is pretty tyrannical. <laughs> uh, but Rhea Ripley successfully... Uh, defends her women's world championship by pinning uh, Becky Lynch in a fair opening match. Uh, I wasn't really blown away. I thought it was good. Yeah, it was a good match. Uh, I, I yeah. like long hair Rhea. I like those dudes doing her entrance music. Oh, it sucked. Why did that suck? The dude looked yeah. like her. It was actually kind of yeah, neat. They were all dressed no. the same. Nah, fuck that. I I do not like the live band fucking intros. They ne- they're never they're Here never go. as good. Yep. Never as good. So. Wow. Yep. Fuck them. Yeah, who those jack offs are? Look at look at that guy. Do you see his tattoos? Calm down. Just cal- calm down with the ink. Wow. Why? He had a fucking like sleeve up up to just fucking it's his fucking jawline. Dude, you have a Kevin Sullivan tattoo. Stop. Yeah, stop it, dude. It looks a fucking Jack great. tattoo, don't you? What? Ma- mankind. 
It looks yeah. like a mustache. Don't you have a four horseman tattoo as well? Yes, I do. Yeah, see, there you go. Yes, okay. Yeah, so but I, I'm you... not fucking covered up to my jawline. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody dipped his ass in ink. Fuck that well, guy. Man, you. <laughs> Weird. Fuck him. Jawline? Weird, Weird hill to die on. Yeah, fuck him. You know, I want to take it a step further, handsome Kevin. Oh, please I do. I think I'm kind of tired of the whole fucking ink thing to begin with. Just done with it. Just oh done with God. it. Like, less is more. Yeah. I like think you're going to stand out more that. if you don't have ink in the future. In the future? Yeah. The year 2000. Like, from this moment forward in the future. Okay. This exact stop moment getting, right Everyone here? stop getting ink. Yeah. April 8th, 725 p.m. Eastern yes. time? Yes. 100%. Forward. Stop getting ink. From this moment. From this moment. Celine Dion. Mm-hmm. She sang from this moment? Was it her? Or I don't know. That's a great question. You uh, had Shania to Twain. With Celine Dion. Shania Twain from this moment. Is it? Yes. Why does that no. not even sound familiar? I, you, I, if, if you told me it was Celine Dion again, I would totally believe you. It's a song. <laughs> you know what I could really do without? Let, let's, let's take it back a step. Need? What the fuck was that? <laughs> I, locked, I just knocked my drink over. I got a video <laughs> playing. I fucking watched it happen. It was great. The somas are kicking in. <laughs> they really are. Um, pulling up some Shania Twain. I don't mind the Prime logo in the middle of the ring. I'm a little weird with it being on the turnbuckles, though. It was only on the top one. No, it was the top and the bottoms and the middle. Oh, was, was the it? WWE. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. This fucking hand job. Um, Shania Twain. I also find it weird that the ads are on the screens, but they still felt the need to put the ad up in the corner as well. Like they would do that periodically. Fucking and uh, as fucking Mopadope waddles in to take a piss. Um, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Pat McAfee could fuck all the way off. He was stupid. I feel like he found stupid. his groove. He found his groove in, in night two. I think. No, I think night two was worse, man. No, I night one was far worse than night two for him. It was it's, it was rough, man. It was rough. Like he doesn't know when to lay out. He doesn't know when to shut up. He's saying like stupid. Did who was the one? Didn't he? Who was the one that cursed on night two? Was it Matt him? Thing. Yeah, the it was Rock. Thing. What did he say? What was the line? He said shit. He said someone said holy, and then there was a pause, and he said shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't dig that. I don't dig that on commentary, right. man. I just so, don't. I don't dig the Rock. Fucking every other, every other word was the F word. Yelling at the referee. Like I get it. He wants to be angry. He wants to throw his weight around. But it's like they got to be real careful opening these fucking cans up like this, you know? They yeah. Clearly, like Matt said before about like the awnings and stuff. Like you don't think they've thought about this? Like you don't think this is like meticulously discussed? And they probably already prepare for for dropping f-bombs and dropping curse words now like i feel like that's where the the the, the, ah, bleh, the direction that we're going in now i know but i i don't know if i'm on board with that man that's like there's some stuff that's better off left in the can you know what i'm saying like you don't need to open that shit up all the time it's like it's been out of control like like especially with this feud like, like, like the feud is strong enough. Do we need every other word to be like a curse word or an F word or describing genitals or something like that? Do you listen to this show? <laughs> we are not a conglomerate. I understand. That's putting on our premium live events in front of 150,000 people in cold ass Philadelphia uh, advertising dude wipes and fucking giant, giant boys for Slim Jim, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. Yeah, what is that? That was weird. That's what yeah, they I've call them now. Those boys are taking a shit. Yeah, I know. I never have. And I stick Slim Jims <laughs> up my ass to keep myself from shitting. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, exactly. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> no, fuck you, dude. Yeah, fuck you, dude. The main priority is masturbation, dudes. To <laughs> free the pussies. <laughs> Just saying, every sound drop I have of you is you cursing or saying something inappropriate. But I am not involved in what is like the biggest storyline in professional wrestling. I understand, I but I think where we speak to each other, the way we speak to each other, like if we were if we were on the phone or texting or playing Fortnite, God forbid, this is how we would be talking to each other. Yeah, but isn't that how you would speak to somebody that you absolutely despised and loathed and wanted to beat the shit out of? Like, isn't that the words that would come out of your mouth? Like, I think there's a time and a, like, I 
I am. It's rest. First of all, it's WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. And excuse me, Soma's come back up. Um, also, I don't think they're gonna make it a normal thing. I think this was them trying to get the fans to feel the emotion of the anger that The Rock was conveying towards Cody and the way he disrespected his family. I don't think you're going to turn on Monday Night Raw tonight and Cody's going to come out and go, how about that shit when I fucked that bitch up? Like, I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. Like, right. And the stuff on, like, Peacock, like, when the... And uh, I don't want to get ahead because I still want to talk about Night One. But, like, with the guy in the Prime Bottle, Aesop... Koppenbach or whatever the fuck his yes, name is. Yes, Aesop Koppenbach. That's like, exactly the same as I Show Speed. He, he, I don't know what an I Show Speed is. It was it, the dude in the Prime Bottle. I understand, but I don't know who, like, he could have been the fucking dude that cuts my grass. I wouldn't have known who he was. Yeah. But, like, they were, they were, like, he was cursing and you could, they were trying to catch up to him. Like, they were trying yeah, to. Yeah, well, that was ridiculous. Kept cutting out. That was ridiculous. I mean, I, tell I the fucking guy in the Prime Bottle he can't fucking drop <laughs> F-bombs. <laughs> Why, I don't understand why Peacock has to do that. Like they air movies that have like big curse words on it. Because like, why? Peacock is not uh, WWE is probably being uh, geared toward younger adults. Yeah. If you got kids in the audience, you got to be careful with stuff like that. Which is another reason why I'm not crazy about all the f bombs and the s bombs. Oh, okay. Well, that. the live audience is a different story than the actual TV audience. Because. If, if, if Peacock wanted to, they would just put the settings on. Like this thing contains. Was there? A, there is a warning at the beginning, actually, isn't there? There's I think, it's, still I think it's just a copyright one. warning, isn't it? Oh, it's just a copyright one. Okay, yeah. I thought Okay. But like, also, that's, he's that's, not a WWE performer, so like. No, he don't give a fuck. I'm he sure somebody had to tell him. Hey there, Maka Faka Singh. Don't don't fuck Maka Singh. Sing. I don't know. <laughs> Still, don't know. Don't know what his what's his claim to fame, Tony. What's he do? He's a he's an influencer. He's one of these guys that does content oh. for YouTube. It's Did, you know, didn't he eat the RKO sideways. from Randy Orton not too long ago? He did it on the table. No, he that was the- that was that was KSI. Oh, uh, okay. That's he's the different. prime guy. He, yeah. Don't know who that is either. Nope. They can both another, eat a shit. He's another influencer. Yeah, they could both eat a shit. So I don't. Think yeah, but like, they're smart. But they're smart for bringing in people no, that are associated it. with him because most of the people who know Logan Paul is know who ESI is and who is uh, a KSI. Jesus Christ, KSI and I Show Speed. Yeah. So how does that help? Because it's cool. It's like holy shit, KSI was on wrestling last night. Yeah, because we got to start watching Paul, his wrestling. Yeah. yeah, when Logan Paul and KSI put that on their social media feeds and it gets fucking three million views. Yep. You know, yep. you hope you hope a fraction of those people put on Raw tonight to see if either of those guys are on it. Yep. Hundred percent. Yep. I get it. I just like I. I mean, like, that's Bill, the fucking hot dog guy. I'm mean, like, oh, fuck you, Bill. He eat an RKO. <laughs> I might recognize Bill, the hot dog guy, before I, I recognize, I, I, what is it? I show, is it I show speed? Yes. I okay. show speed. point? No, just a small I, like an uh, iPhone. Oh, uh, I gotcha. I show speed. You know, speed. HBK, if he's showing speed, I figure that may be the kind of guy that you were into. HB double T, sir. Get it right. I don't know who this what HBK is. When I say HBK, is. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, so what did you? What do we cover here? We barely got through the first match before we were upset about commentary. <laughs> right. We let's just let's just check the boxes though. Right. We talked about them crying about the weather. We got that yep. out of the way. Uh, I thought commentary on night two was worse than night one. See, that's oh, what I thought too. Tony felt the same way. Yeah, because I think Pat, Pat McAfee was completely unhinged on night two. I also don't understand like how you have like McAfee and Cole have a chemistry from doing raw, right? Why are you bringing in the guy from SmackDown? It's a joint branded show, brother. I get it, but like they, they they don't work together. Like it definitely did not sound like they were all in sync. Right. I wonder and then you're putting Cody out there, then you put Snoop Dogg out there. Like Bro. Snoop Dogg on commentary was the greatest fucking thing ever. <laughs> when he's going, hey, boo-boo, it's Yogi Bear. Get a picnic table. I fucking almost lost my shit. God bless Snoop Dogg. He's such a treasure. I, yeah, my man. question is, 
why didn't him and Dre, why did they come up with gin and juice like 10 years ago? You figured they would have jumped on that shit like when everybody else was putting their drinks out there. Seriously. Like 20, 30. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. McAfee, like, he's not the same on Raw. I feel like he's, like, turned. Was he, like, maybe he was, like, smoking fucking weed with, with Snoop before they started the show. Like, he was on a, he was unbelievably fucking annoying. Yep. I wonder if I that's the first time. Do we know if that's the first time all three of them have been on the in a booth together? It's got to be, right? I feel like they've called a show before. McAfee and Corey Graves at the same time. The Rumble? Ah, really? yes. Yes. You're right. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't I didn't mind I didn't mind it as much either night. Neither, neither one of them really they didn't that wasn't bad enough to take me out of the event. So I it, to me it couldn't have been all that bad. It was just annoying. It really was. Yeah. Sorry. It was annoying. It's okay. No, because I felt like on night two, there was a couple, like, I thought it was great, and we're jumping all over the place, but we will get back to night one. I thought night two, like, they laid out for Cody's entrance. I thought that was great. But then also during the Eosky Bailey match, like, when Bailey has Eo Sky and she's, like, going to hit her, and Eo's like, no, I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Like, they fucking just talked over it, and they never referenced it once when when Eo, like, used that false sense of, like, oh, I'm your friend, and Becky or Bailey kind of let her guard down, and then Eo sucker punched her. They just, like, they didn't even mention it. They just, like, fucking just kept going. And I don't, I can't tell you what they were talking about, but I know it wasn't that, like, moment, and it doesn't, it doesn't structure the whole match and it doesn't put the explanation point on the match. But like as the color commentary guy, like there's a reason why Bailey didn't punch her in her fucking face in that moment. It's because EOS guy's going, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. We're friends. Remember we're friends where Bailey has that moment where she's like, which is what the whole story was built on. Like Bailey didn't want to fight EOS guy because they were friends, but they fucking steamrolled right over it. And I was like, come on guys. That's a spot where either Cole or whoever's on the headset in the back has to reel them back in and be like, you needed to touch on that. Uh, like, you had to do it. Like, so that's like, Corey Graves knows better too, by the way. So that that's really surprising. But, uh, but yeah, that's where either Cole or someone, whoever's on the headset producing them, has to come in and be like, this was a huge pivotal part of the story and you just completely didn't fucking touch on it. You really should have, and then maybe come back to it. But at that point, maybe they thought the the bloom was off the rose. I don't yeah, know. You know, and look, I could just be picking nits. Um, you know, it didn't take me out of it, but McAfee was just like annoying. He was almost like it's almost like Moro, less less in less information. Moro, where he's just yelling to yell, Mamma Mia. <laughs> at least Moro knew what was going on and had like. Like and I still am not the biggest Mauro Ronaldo fan, but like McAfee was just yelling to yell. Yeah, I I I, I can't tell if that's like by design or if he's just that super excited to be there and be a part of it. He's like that big of a fan. Where like, granted, don't give him the job then if if you don't think clearly they think he's doing a good job, or they just clear that his presence on the TV is is because like you said, Matt, he's great on Raw. So like. I guess just having him there is more does more positives than negatives. The other the other thing was with the oh Cole Graves acknowledge your tribal chief. It's like no, shut the fuck up, dude. Sit down. You know what how I'm can saying? you root for J? How can you root for Jay Uso and also acknowledge Roman Reigns at the same time? Yeah, because he's a fucking maniac. That's why. <laughs> uh, so, what did you guys think of Rhea Becky? It uh, it started off kind of choppy for me, like just Come just getting here. like the first. Probably three five minutes. It didn't. It didn't look like they were meshing well, uh, but by the end of it, I really enjoyed the match. So it, it came together nice. Like I say that, that once you got past that, you know that first opening, you know, three five minutes where it was it was choppy and a little bit sloppy. Uh, it it came it came together nicely. I actually ended up really enjoying that match. Agreed. I would say up until the three-way for the U.S. title on night two, that was probably my favorite match at WrestleMania so far, was Rhea and... Um, Bex? Yeah, and Big Time Bex. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Loved it. I love the the riptide onto the turnbuckle and then the finish to, to hit it in the ring. I thought that was very 
a new concept that we haven't seen her do before, I don't think. So uh, I, I love that. That was, like I said, that was my favorite match through most of WrestleMania. The uh, oh. the roll over the top rope we had him uh, when she when Rhea had Becky in the electric chair lift yes. and they rolled through to the that was fucking beautiful like it just and that could go wrong so quickly and they fucking landed it it was it was it was very impressive I was after that happened I was fucking sitting there clapping like an asshole going did you motherfuckers just see that like it was it was fucking <laughs> awesome Dunk thoughts on the 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 Rick Rick, Rick. Rhea it was Beck. really. It was really good. I wouldn't say it was great. Uh, I think I think the consensus was correct that started off a little slow, but it really started to work together. We got to remember, boys, 102 fever. You know, you got to give it to Becky. <laughs> she hung in there like a champ, but she did not become one. <laughs> not on this no. night. That, I lost that match, too, in the picks. And we'll go down after we talk all this shit. We'll, we'll go down picks. What do you is the are we waiting for Charlotte to to be back at 100% to get nope. her to finish her Don't story. Care. So who's next for Rhea then? Who gives a shit. Hopefully Liv Morgan? She, yeah, hopefully she kills Liv Morgan and kills everybody else. You want I wanted to champion? kill one of those, like, one of the girls involved with, like, the uh, the Mexico thing, like the LWO or whatever, or maybe let her kill Scarlett Johansson or whatever her name is, Scarlett Bordeaux. <laughs> yeah. When you say kill. No, just like murder him in the ring, you know. I get you, Scarlett Johansson. Nice. Yeah, there you I think go. you mean Drew Barrymore because she was there last night. Whatever, all of them. Yeah. Fuck uh, she should just be murdering bitches every week, every okay. week on that show. Yeah, mommy is popular. Fuck yeah, she is, and she's she's very easy on the eyes too, if I do say so myself. Oh. Yeah, but would you take this? Would you take the stink face? Fuck yeah! Well, you wouldn't. Yeah, of course. What do Especially you, after the, after a twenty minute match. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's HK? What's wrong, HK? The fuck? Are, you, you, what about all the tattoos on her? Ooh. Well, this is him? starting today, so she's had them in the past, so I'm going to allow it. Okay. But if she gets any more, head. she's on the list. Oh, okay. fuck. There's a list. list. Yeah, now there is. <laughs> How am I going to keep track of these women? It's a tough <laughs> business for an HK. Yeah, I guess so. Um, we had the Raw Tag Title SmackDown Tag Title Six Pack Ladder Match. I don't. I, I, I don't think any of us knew this was for both sets of titles. No, nope. right? like Compl- they were two separate winners. Everybody did pick the awesome truth to win, so I just gave everybody the win yep. in the picks. That 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 that's one hundred percent makes sense. But uh, it is it was a nice device to split the belts up. I wish they would have made that clear from the jump. You know, yeah. I agreed. And even if someone had Austin uh, Theory and Grayson Waller in the picks, I would have also awarded them. Oh, for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. But if if we had known there was two picks, then we would have made two picks. Um, can we just let DIY be their own thing? Why do they have to be like a DX ripoff? Dude, they are not over at all. I thought it's, they were kind of over in this match. Maybe, maybe in the match because their in-ring work speaks for itself, but their entrance. And I feel like, Matt, tell me if you are HB double T. Tell me how you feel about this. I feel like the crowd overall was just like until like – the, the top two matches on each night, like the crowd to me was just like dead ski, like totally didn't feel any energy from them at all. Now, maybe that's the stadium. I don't know. But and HK, you look like you had something to say. So if you want to chime in on this, I was going to say uh, stadium might have something to do with it more. More so, I think it was the weather. If if it was if you know what I mean if it was cold and the wind's coming uh, you know at you at 15 miles an hour and it's already chilly it's really hard to get like completely invested and amped up and and yelling unless you're completely liquored up so I think I think that the the crowd like because I, I 100% agree they it felt down especially for the first night and and I do think that the weather probably played uh, a pretty pretty strong yeah. factor in that and HP double T like a lot of the matches were like I kind of crucified people for calling it filler and just called it undercard i feel like they actually when i was actually watching mania some of these matches actually did feel like filler as opposed to how they were built up like as the matches were happening i was like oh man like why like why is this on here like this 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 isn't like no way out or something and it just and i feel like the crowd had a lot to do with it to me to me well look when we when when we were wrapping up last week and they announced nights one and two and we went through the cards i mean i think it was across the board everyone thought night two was way better night right and that was just of them announcing it uh Rhea Becky delivered the six pack ladder match was fun there were some fucking crazy crazy fucking spots um 
Tomasa doing that the 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 fucking backpack thing off the top of the fucking yeah. ladder like that's dude that's you are woo you are trust you are trusted Tomasa Ciampa not to fucking kill you upside yeah. down off that top, oh, off the top yeah but you know what that. that's um isn't that the thing that Seamus used to do the the Celt the, the curse or some shit like I know what you mean you kind of hold yeah. him by the head the it's Celtic a safe cross? enough bump to take but from off that the height, top of a ladder like, no I right. get it and did you notice there were a couple times like you could see where the ladders were gimmicked where like the the break spots were in because yeah. when I forget who it was, but when they were going for the raw belts on the left, somebody was climbing the ladder, and the referee was, like, grabbing at his leg. I forget who it was. Priest. And she, yeah, and she's like, that ladder's fucked, she's telling him. So then they wind up shit canning it. Do you think that's what it was, or do you think it was, like, there's another spot coming? No, it was, the, it was the ladder. The ladder okay. was fucked. Because I, I, Was it the Miz climbing the other side? You could yeah, actually that's... see it buckling. I was like, what? That Good part I she... noticed, but I just thought the referee was tapping her like, no, not yet. Not, like, kind of one of those not yet things. Like, not no, not she yet. she was coming. grabbing okay. him. Like, she yeah. was pulling. And when he turned around, she's like, no. Because then, like, shortly after was when he shit cans the ladder. And R-Truth is actually getting one in. And the stupid fucking McAfee's going, R-Truth is helping him get a ladder. He's like, no, stupid. He was trying. You say he's trying to get the ladder in himself and Priest cut him off and stole it from him. <laughs> get it right, bro. Don't make the guys look stupid. No, but they they, they recovered from that well. No, they did. And it was cool to see uh, R-Truth and uh, The Miz win the titles. It was, it, was a, it was a cool moment. It was cool that fucking uh, Theory and What's-His-Nuts won the other belts, too. It was like, oh, fuck you, boo, you know? Dude, I, think, I think Grayson Waller is going to be a star. Oh, here, here's one nitpick, right? Actually, oh. a plus and a minus. I'll give you a plus and a minus. Uh, New Day's outfits going with the fucking Apollo Creed and Rocky outfits, fucking choice. DIY and whatever other fucking team it was, was it the Brutes? The new Catch Republic. What? Why are they all wearing the same green outfits? I couldn't fucking tell them apart. They're all the same size. They're all the same color. It's like, <laughs> come on, man. Co I get it. The theme is green, but coordinate that shit. You know what I'm saying? You really couldn't tell the difference between John. I couldn't. I got lost Tyler half the time Bates. watching these assholes. <laughs> Sorry, I mean vanilla midgets all look the same to me. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, leprechauns, if you really want. To fucking... uh, uh, let's. I just want to go to the comments for some of some of these guys that are here. Scott George, Matthew Birch, Danny Russ is there. Um, uh, Matthew Birch DIY was definitely the uh, MVP of the ladder match for me. That DDT Gargano hit off the apron through yes. a table was incredible. Yeah, Danny was Russ spot. says, uh, "Is that the white noise? Is that was that what called?" That's what it was. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. white noise. Um, uh, Scott George says, "Eagles colors." Well, of course, it's Philly, but it was the WrestleMania colors. Like they went with the yeah. green and white scheme. Of course, our uh, green. I like DIYs a tag team, but are they just like forever NXT guys? Yeah. Yep. 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 And I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but no. just look, it's like Shane Taylor promotions being ROH guys. They haven't done fuck all on the on AEW, but you know, they could fucking run a pretty penny over on uh, Ring of Honor. It is and in a is. world where like music is so important to somebody's entrance now, you know, i.e. Uh, Rollins, Nakamura, Cody, all this stuff, like their music does not invoke any emotion when they come out. It's like, it doesn't get you off your feet. There's no catchy hook to start it off. It's just like, it, and they're just not, I love them both to death. I think they're great, but like, they're just not connecting on the main roster. Why are they DIY and why haven't they run with a fucking um, Tim the Toolman Taylor gimmick with this? <laughs> why can't they come out in fucking overalls, <laughs> fucking tool belts instead instead of like like instead of like I yank them where it's just the fucking drill? Have them fucking come out to sounds of like chainsaws or and fucking hammers and shit, dude. Come out to the fucking home home improvement theme. Just like repair the ropes. And Bro, like, and they would be insane not to get a Home Depot crossover, right? Or fucking Lowe's. Lowe's will put their fucking logo in the middle of the ring. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing. I, they could name all their fucking moves after, like, power tools and shit. Like, come on. Well, there's already a jackhammer. Well, the bin for Buster. Is that <laughs> The screwdriver. The, That's it. The fucking, the, the moment the, the to hammer me. Lock the uh that match when r-truth made the hot tag oh yeah 
I could <laughs> not on. stop laughing. And like, it, usually I don't like that shit, but I think with his character, you can get away with anything. Like, you can do absolutely fucking he's, anything with that. He's character. Perf- he's perfected that goofy character, yeah. and it lets Miz off the hook for doing it too. Yeah, yeah, like, yep. because he carries over to Miz. He gives Miz way more uh, babyface personality than he's ever had. Yes, so yeah. loved it. So uh, A Town down under, they walk out as the I forget what what are they on SmackDown? SmackDown, SmackDown yeah. They're the SmackDown champs, and our tr- awesome truth is the Raw tag team champions. Uh, I missed. I was working uh, Saturday, so I played catch up last night after night two, and I fast forwarded through all the entrances. Did they uh, explain why Andrade was taking Dragon Lee's place? On SmackDown, they did. Okay. Because SmackDown on SmackDown, he got jumped. And then Andrade was so bullshit and cheesy. And like Andrade just offered to take the spot. And they said, okay, instead of Carlito or anyone else. So well, Andrade hey, why did and they Ray, sign Carlito? Ooh. Carlito hasn't done fuck all since they signed him. He's just there. He was wearing like, sweats, wasn't he? Like everybody else was in gear. He comes out in fucking sweats and a t-shirt. Like they don't give a fuck. And that's cool. He, he really he really don't. Um this is this tag match was the best I've seen Andrade probably in his entire career. Nah, he oh seemed my. motivated. He seemed like he was into everything. And he looked fucking good, dude. He looked really good in this match. No, look, I don't disagree, but I think the best Andrade match is him and Gargano at one of mm-hmm. those NXT takeovers. Well, that's fine. I, I don't watch NXT, so this okay. is my favorite Andrade. <laughs> you should, dude. Seriously, if I'll, 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 it's one of the takeovers. Takeover. I think it's Takeover Philadelphia during the Rumble. Yeah, that Rumble and then he shows year. up. And he's in the Rumble the next ma- the next night. Their fucking NXT World Title match is fucking awesome. But this was great. Uh, you know, obviously there's the story with Ray and Dom. Um, they, they got Jack Jacqueen Wild got his spot in where they fucking shot him like a cannon. That was the awesome. girls Jaqueen. fought. Jacqueen. DJZ. Fuck. Hope you shit your pants. I hope you yeah. shit your fucking pants. It's Joaquin Wild, by the way. T-Dom. Joaquin. Bro, I fucking smell. <laughs> Sure this match was fine, but I think back to, to KJG saying before, like, we went into this, like, there's no filler. This was filler. You didn't you didn't like the fucking big jack-offs that came into the ring? <laughs> oh, Travis Kelty and was it Lane Logan Morgan? Jay, Lane Johnson? Jason, Lane Jason Johnson. Kelf, and Lane Jason Johnson. Kelsey. It was Jason Kelsey, yeah. Jason Kelsey and Logan Lowe's. <laughs> Logan Blows. Logan Blows. <laughs> Yeah, like, and you know what? Okay, there's per- McAfee knew immediately who he was. He didn't like let it. Of course he did. Be- he fucking yelled it for twenty minutes. Oh my god! <laughs> Just let him take the fucking masks off, dude. <laughs> I know who that is. I, it's the greatest center in football history. Gives a shit. Like Tony Khan announced like a match a second yeah, after, and then like everybody's the in the ring, like fucking pointing at him, like the Spider-Man meme, like who are you? Who are you? And Pat McAfee's losing his fucking mind. Just let the fucking guys unmask. <laughs> Jesus. I wouldn't know fucking Lane Johnson if I walked into him either. I know it's fucking Philadelphia and all those fucking mouth breathers down there know who he is. I don't fucking know who he is. I know the other idiot because his fucking brother's banging Taylor Swift. <laughs> Been there, done that, Taylor. I Tyler, actually... <laughs> Travis, whatever your fucking dumb name is. HB Double T smashes them all. I actually told my wife because she watched both nights with me and I told her, uh, I said, hey, that's Travis Kelsey. She didn't know the difference. She goes, where's Taylor Swift? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It doesn't fucking matter. None of this shit matters. So Andrade and Ray get the win. It's a big hurrah. Uh, Matthew Birch thinks they're hurrah. building up uh, Carlito to turn on the LWO because Ray chose Dragon Lee and then Andrade over him. Gives a and, shit. Uh, Carlito sucks balls. Mott Spock, yes, that is our truths first Mania win. I think they What's mentioned up? that on commentary. What's up? 400 times. This is his first win, Carlito! You know what I thought was cool that they did? Um, the champion challenger graphics. And then I have a terrible concept of time. So when they're like, this is Becky Lynch's eighth WrestleMania, I'm like, whoa, really? She's been around for fucking that. Like, I'm just, I have no yeah. concept of time when it comes she, to this shit. She's been around a long time already. It's Imagine crazy. WrestleMania that it's for Mysterio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's fucking wild. Uh, Jay wild, Uso, wild. Jimmy Uso was our next match. Yeah. This I one couldn't. Flat, dude. Bro. 
I get it. I know it's a business. The fucking dude wipe. Ev every <laughs> the, that's all I could fucking see. Ev dude, come the dude fuck wipes. on. It's on the fucking ring skirt. It's on the fucking poles. It's on the turnbuckles. It's on the 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 barricade behind there. It's on the wall. It's fuck. All I see is dude. I'm trying to. I can't. My eyes can't focus. It's fucking one o'clock in the morning last night. I'm trying to fucking get through. The, just I'm like I gotta watch these WrestleManias. And I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, dude wipes, dude wipes, dude wipes, <laughs> super kick, dude wipes, dude wipes, super kick, dude wipes. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, guess what, uh, Matt? They did their job then. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Everywhere. I, I hated the advertising. I'm, I'm right with you. But I will take that advertising over seeing that fucking jack off in the green shirt and the shitty brown hat, dead center, opposite hard cam. Every fucking show. Drives me fucking nuts. Well, I don't know who that is. The f that motherfucker with that's the gr the lime green shirt with the smiley face on it and a beat up old brown ball cap. He's had every major event right there, front and center. You don't he fucking grinds, notice that? Hey, he grinds your gears, huh? Grinds my fucking gears. And I was watching with uh, one of the guys that came over as a very uh, casual fan, and right. he was picking up on the advertising here and there. But then they they showed the fucking the guy sitting there. I was like, God, I fucking hate seeing that guy at every. And then it was like. 20 minutes later, he's like, I wish you would have never mentioned it. Because now every time the fuck, now I fucking see him, no matter what, I'd look for him. It's like, ah, it fucking sucks. I gotta take these, this, this shit off. <gasps> <gasps> he's in pain. What? Fucking eyes hurt, man. <laughs> and, you, and, and you want me to come up with a new punishment at the end of April? Are you Dude, I wore team? that shit last week for three fucking hours. I still have the earrings on. Too. He does. And in the you shirt. bought me a fucking extra small hat, bro. That's all they had, bro. It's one size fits all. It's not. We it found is. it says small right there, you <laughs> cocksucker. You fucking dickbag. Can you cut the back of it? And just have it rest? Cut the back of it? What am I, some fucking creepy old Italian man? Mm. It's all sweaty. I gotta wash it again now. It's all fucking sweaty. <laughs> Hi, there, are you happy? I put it yeah, on. Much better. Go. Over the cans. Uh, a lot of people disappointed in Jimmy vs. Jay. Yeah. Yep. Was it the quality of the match, or do you think we put it too much on a pedestal with the brother vs. brother story? Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I really didn't care. If it was slapped together. Like, I know there's history there, but Whole lot it, just, of history. it didn't come across, man. It just it just didn't. And then, like, oh, well, my, my brother, I love you. I'm sorry. And Yeah. We didn't know it was going to happen there, right? Right, but that plays back into the to the EO Bailey type thing. It's just like a plot device to try to to swerve you in some sort of direction, even though you kind of know what the the end game is going to be. Listen, Jay Uso is super over, super popular, super talented. Jimmy Uso, I think, is criminally underrated in terms of his character development, being that sw swarmy, like sneaky, like kind of like joker-esque kind of guy who like just comes out with that look on his face and he just walks like this like with that like lean on him and um i don't want to say that this match under delivered to me but i think i think part of it is that we set our expectations too high for it this is I the think... match that they wanted so for so long it's their dream match we set the us as fans set the expectations high and they just didn't come up with it if you watch it again you'll probably say it was probably a decent match i i Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I watched it twice. Okay. And it did not deliver. It was it was disappointing. And, and I think one of the reasons that I did want to make sure to watch it twice was exactly like to your point, like the expectation. Now, I didn't have giant expectations of this match because I think that Jay as a single is, is much better than Jimmy is as a single. I think Jimmy definitely needs something around him. Um, from a match standpoint, I like the way they were trying to tell the story. Like the brothers were essentially canceling each other out. Hated that he went for two suicide dives in the first fucking minute. I hate, I just bugs the hell out of me. But overall, the match did not deliver. This was not, this was not, and, and they did the comparisons to Brett and Owen, which didn't do them any favors either. But like, this is, this is not a, yeah. this is not a, a fantastic match. This was this, very this, subpar. This was more of a Matt and Jeff Hardy 
than it, than it was a Brett Owen. Brett Owen put on a clinic. Matt and Jeff Hardy also under delivered in their extreme rules, uh, except for the finish. That was an incredible finish, the tw- twist of fate with the chair. But um, I feel like not to jump ahead to night two, but I feel like they did Jimmy and Jay did more in night two in their spot in the main event in like five seconds than they did in, in their entire match on uh, on night one. Yeah, Jay so. Jay is more of an independent star i don't know if i'd put him on a really high pedestal but jimmy's just a fucking also ran in a group that's yeah. that that's his position you know yeah and i feel like part of that is his own doing because they yeah. can't they can't have him in a spot of super prominence and let him show himself to be the star that i think he is because of his history same thing like they the aw does with like jeff hardy like you can't let jeff hardy be jeff hardy because of his past and you can't trust him to be around all the time and I feel like Jimmy Uso has a little bit of that checkered past. But I still think Jimmy is super succeeding in his role. His role is to be that lackey, that that sniveling suck up to the boss, jerk, joker-esque kind of character. And I think he's playing it to a T. It's just that it's not in the position where Jay Uso is. It's just not. So Jay gets the win. Uh, we're on to the six, six, six ladies tag match. Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, Naomi defeat, damage control. Um, this was this was fine. Yo, yeah. when Bianca Belair hit that bitch with her fucking hair, Bro. I don't know if she's <laughs> fucking slapped her leg or t- that sounded like it hurt though. My son said to me, he goes, "How is that fucking legal? How is that legal? How is it legal? Oh, what are you, the fucking rules commission over here? You and this fucking chode above you. All right. Well, I will rules. Say, you got to have rules. I will just say this. She's a face. Okay. She's so a Ovi. face. She's also cheating. How? Unprovoked, might I add. How is she cheating? Yeah, what did she do? She's she using used- a foreign object. Her it's hair. Her is hair. Part, it's part of her. It's part of her. It's not illegal. Yeah, it might as well be a forearm, <sighs> right? No, look. If you want to apply it to a real sports, when Ricky Williams dreads hung out the back of his helmet and he got tackled by him, it was legal. It's yeah. part of the uniform. Yeah, his hair wasn't running the fucking forty in four point one seconds. I yeah, mean, but when you are and you that. get tackled by your fucking hair, yeah. He's not running down the field whipping people with his fucking dreads. Well, maybe he could have, and she doesn't do it all the time. Yeah, oh. she only did it when it fit the fucking purpose yeah. that she needed. Okay, it's advantage. the same reason when Hogan cheated. Don't get all fucking high and mighty. People would cheat on the Hulkster, and then the Hulkster would have to cheat on him back. <laughs> Referees discuss. Oh, you don't think control damage is treating? Treating? But they're the bad guys. Damage control? <laughs> treating. Control damage Who, is treating. What are they treating him to? <laughs> I had a couple cream? somas and a couple ciders. Fuck off. <laughs> Soma ciders. Soma cider coming to you this fall. It, it, it was fine for what it was. It was more of a showcase for Jade Cargill, which I think it got that point over. Uh, she's still not ready, but put her in spots like this, get her that training, get her put accentuate the positives and hide the negatives. And this is how you build Jade Cargill up. And can I make a, I want to make a point about this, uh, this match that has really nothing to do with the match, but it's more of like the showmanship of their entrance, their entrance, the three of them, Naomi, Bianca and Jade actually felt like the first real like wrestlemania like entrance of the night like it felt really cool seeing them all like rise down that on that platform and then come down each get their own little segment of music and come in and they they just felt like a they all had some sort of weird like hand signal that i guess they all planned to do as well which really like, looked cool weird. yeah it was that was something weird um but it felt like this actually felt like a real wrestlemania entrance to me and i i, I enjoyed the heck out of it so doom, shout out doom, 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 doom. Uh, tony loves it tony I loves love that. feeling the glow bro yeah big glow. No, no glow. you're not a big glow guy hk no glow no Why? glow that's a no go on the no glow no glow no glow no go on the glow no Just not a fan did Just you like did no you glow? not enjoy bianca jade and naomi uh <sighs> I liked I like what they did with Jade. I was fine with that. Uh, Bianca's always enjoy. Like Bianca's a, a, a very talented performer. Naomi has never hit for me ever. Really? Yep. Yep. Never been into it. The whole the whole thing. What about like, her TNA run? Uh, I didn't see a lot of her TNA run. So I mean, like when, when I did see her in TNA, it was it was kind of the same thing. Like it just doesn't. It just just not there for me. Interesting. 
Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. She got yep. her hand raised. You picked her, so you win too. Yeah. Good for you me. are the winner. We're all uh, winners. Sammy Zane dethrones Gunther. What a fucking surprise this uh, was. I picked it. I'm the only one that took Sammy Zane. Well, good for you. What are you in for? Good for me now. Uh, I thought that, look, I know people are upset. They want a Chad Gable. Oh, fuck Chad Gable. But I think Gunther. Nobody wanted Chad Gable. Cry babies. Cry babies. Co- Chad Gable cry babies? Yeah, Gable babies. Gay babies. This yeah. is this is what Sami Zayn. <laughs> Back here if you need me. <laughs> it didn't come out right. Gabies? No, that sounds worse. Never mind. Gay babies. Yeah. What? He's the best. I will call you the call Perfect master answer. Jimmy Fart. <laughs> um uh Look, Sami Zayn is the proverbial baby face. He will always be a baby face. This is the role he plays, the ultimate underdog. His wife's in. The fans get fucking behind him. This is his whole career. This is El Generico. This is Sami Zayn. This is what he does. He never breaks out that that top rope brain buster, you know, that he breaks it out to beat Gunther. Two haluva kicks, like... I wasn't mad about it. I know people were kind of like super duper upset about it, but I didn't see a problem with it. Has, it goes. It, has it go, oh, I'm sorry, Tony. Go ahead. It, it goes back to what KJG and I were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Like, it's more like you feel Sami Zayn could have done it rather than Brock Lesnar doing it if he was if he got this match at Mania, you know, because it's more believable. Like he could have fought from underneath and won this match, and it would be more believable that he could actually win the title from a guy like Gunther. And let's be honest. What the fuck else is Gunther going to do with this title? Like, I know HK a couple weeks ago was like, let him run with it, let him run with it until the fucking wheels fall off. But eventually, you got to yank that and let the fucking man go up the ladder. Just let him go. And losing to Sami Zayn the way he did, Sami Zayn busting out a fucking uh, the Ghostbuster in the corner, which actually fucking looked good, unlike, you know, the other one. So it fucking made sense. You're talking about uh, Kyle Fletcher's? Yep. Um, Ring of Honor. <laughs> I, as, as soon as uh, Sammy did that, I was like, whoa, Kyle Fletcher just did this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, I think like, there's two schools of thought on this. And one of them is like, A, it makes the Intercontinental Championship continue to be a very prestigious championship. But B, it also kind of feels like I wish the payoff for Sammy, even though I know impossible, would have been if it was a world championship. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Intercontinental Championship is great. Gunther's the longest reigning of all time. Beating him is a huge deal. But I've seen Sami Zayn as the Intercontinental Champion before. I've never seen him as the world champion. So this is this kind of like contradicts what I say about don't complain about what you don't have and enjoy what you do have. But I just feel like, to me, it wasn't as spectacular as a moment as I wanted it to be, if that makes sense. I think it makes sense. The As soon as they showed Sami backstage with Gable... And then when he ran into Kevin Owens, he went, well, I picked the wrong fucking guy. You know, like it was just it was that that to me stood out and made it pretty, pretty obvious. I didn't need to see his wife. They they showed his wife way too much (laughs) at the audience. Sorry, don't I don't need to see that. Keep it at home. But the uh, the match itself was enjoyable. I I'm I didn't want Gunther to lose. Right. I openly right wanted him to keep on carrying the title. But in the fashion that he did lose, I was okay with it. Like, and then the match for me, the match delivered. It was, it was an enjoyable match. I'm excited for what's next for Gunther. And I'm also excited what's next for Sammy. So it is a, it's a win-win scenario for both of them. Uh, you know, obviously even Gunther coming off a loss, he's still in a good position. So yeah, I was, I was very happy with it. Yeah. hundred percent. I think Gunther is, is, to Tony's point, like there's no more like that he could do. He could holding the the title for another hundred days does nothing to Gunther's stock, right? He's already surpassed the honky tonk man. Like he is the great first challenger to Cody now, right? They have the history. They both went into that rumble in twenty three against each other. Like he's a great, great fucking guy. And they're going to what France in a couple in a little while, a couple months. They're going to Saudi in May, like. Gunther is is world traveled. He's world known, and like I want Gunther. I honestly just want Gunther to feud with people who have wives in wrestling, so he can just like 
antagonize them why their husbands are in there like him just fucking mocking sammy's wife which i think was the point of her being there and i know scott george says they make sammy out to be uh a charity case that's what he's a baby face he's the ultimate underdog he's yeah. what johnny gargano is in nxt which is why i don't think johnny gargano is translated well in on the main roster because they don't portray him like that sammy's right. a fucking underdog that's why you cheer for him, right? So to have his wife there and Gunther just like fucking Sammy can't get up and Gunther's doing splashes. Like when the fuck was the last time Gunther was doing top rope splashes? And he's like, come on, get in the ring. Help your husband. Let's go. Dance for me. Like it's just like and he's such a smug. His fucking hair is parted. He has like a punchable face. And I think that's such a great part of his character that I don't think we've got to see where he's like, Come, help your husband. Cheer, clap, do that. Come. Come and do it. <laughs> and again, to I think KJG made this point last week, like the, the 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 his faction is nowhere to be found, which I think really is something special for Gunther. Yeah. yeah. They took his uh like Brundo to you. They took his coat and just walked off. That's it. That's what they do. Brundo, take my bags, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> So Sammy's the new IC champion, and then uh, what? Matt Matthew Birch, uh, where's he? Uh, but 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 uh, I wanted to be gay, Gable, but I'm happy that Sammy won. Plus, Gable told Sammy before the match that Sammy owes him one for training him up. So I think we're getting an awesome story between Sammy and Gabe. Oh, <coughs> I just want to say Gabe. I also can't say in these glasses. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, look, we're coming out of Mania. Like we need more stories. Sammy and Gable is a story, and it helps elevate Chad Gable. Yeah, you know, and Gunther's gonna go wherever he's gonna go. He can only go up, right? We do we know? Do we know? We'll probably get more clarification on this tonight on Raw. But do we know if Cody is now going to be exclusive to SmackDown? <sighs> no idea. Great. Do question. we know if there's going to be a draft? Can Gunther challenge Cody if he's on? Maybe uh, if he if if Cody goes to SmackDown. What is? I believe Trip said not after night one there will be a draft soon. Okay. Yeah, he did say that. okay. Was that in the press conference or was that actually on TV? I think that was night one of the press conference. I can't watch okay. those fucking press conferences. Yeah, I don't watch. I, really I can't, can't watch them either. They're yeah. fucked. The people they fucking let it. How? Here we go. I'm gonna rant. How you don't let Mike Johnson and Brandon Thurston in night one, but some fucking lady gets in who boos Roman Reigns? Like, what do you do? The fucking questions. Who lets these fucking people in? Just because you got a fucking ten thousand followers on social media, you get the. Fucking last night, I fucking left it on. I went to make dinner. I come back. They're talking to Triple H. One guys. Uh, Oh, excuse me, Mr. Legend? What? Why? How? How? How do you get... What is wrong with you? And they asked the fucking dumbest fucking questions. I swear to God. You're not a wrestling journalist. You're a fucking dork loser. Fucking kill yourself. Fucking go away. You're the fucking worst. All of you. If you're not Sean Ross Sapp or Mike Johnson or Brandon Thurston or Chris Van Vlat or... Uh, <laughs> Any of those other fucking people. Just because you put fucking Fightful in your Twiddle handle doesn't mean you're a fucking wrestling journalist, you fucking losers. It's the fucking worst. These scrums suck, and the people that participate in them, they suck. They suck balls. Big, hairy, HP double T balls. Does Kate have Fightful in her Twitter handle? <laughs> She might, but she asks good questions. To how do you feel about the WrestleMania being bigger than the Super Bowl? Shit, really? Shut the Legend. fuck up. Shut the fuck up. WrestleMania, sorry, I love wrestling just as much as you do, dork dorkopotamus, but WrestleMania is not bigger than the Super Bowl. All right? All right? Tony's got Raw on. I know he does. I see him fucking looking up at the screen. You watch <laughs> yeah, it Raw? It's clear. Yeah, a little bit. I just hey, I got fucking asshole. <laughs> All right, what? rant over. Nice. On Next to the main, of, the main <laughs> event of night one, the bloodline against Cody and Seth Rollins. I said it in the text, and I'll say it again. This is Sid Undertaker WrestleMania 13 main event level. I, I don't not, think I, I don't think that's fair. I dude. did not think this. The last five to eight minutes were good. The other 40 minutes were fucking awful. It went. It went. the The biggest, the biggest argument I have is it did go very long. There was no need for it to go this long. Yeah, it was like none what, whatsoever. 40, 40 minutes or something like that. And and the and the Rock with the don't you fucking count? Like, all right, you're a dick. Whatever, we get it. No, that was good. That was good. And and the reason why it was good was because they went out of their way to explain to you why the official wasn't enforcing the rules. No, no, fair enough, fair point, but. 
45 F-bombs to make that point? It's like, come on, dude. Well, I mean, sure, you can have a problem with the F-bombs, but the way they set it up, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Were you were you wowed by any of the extracurriculars that went on outside the ring? It was, no, I mean, it was... I, I, no, not necessarily wowed, but just just give me that to explain why the official isn't enforcing the rules. It was very well, instead of just going, yeah, well, everybody's doing whatever the fuck they want. Go for it. I'll put my hands up and stand over here. No, give me a reason. And they gave me a reason. At that moment, I went, all right, I'm okay. I'm okay with this now. It just felt like a lot of punchy, kicky, let me throw you into this, and then you throw me into that. And... Well, how much could Brock really do like, yeah. without jeopardizing his you know, Hollywood status and movie career? So I didn't really have an issue. I thought the match was actually pretty good. He trained for 12 weeks. Trained? Yeah, yeah. with the fucking, who, who did he train with? Bobby Roode. No, no. Cameron Grimes. Yeah. No, he trained Cameron. with Bobby Roode. I thought there was. I thought there was like a there was, trio. a. there was a. There was a bunch of people he trained with. Right. Yeah, I thought Cameron Grimes has, has, has filled that role a lot of training. You also got the role. feeling that you know they were all trying to protect each other because they had to wrestle on night two, and it, you know people say, "Oh, the ring was wet because it rained." Whatever, like, all right, then don't wrestle fucking back to back nights, guy. I don't like. I didn't think it was great. You Fine. know what I t- You know what was cool? Roman spearing the Rock. Yes. Yeah. Roman. Roman either not wetting his hair enough or it really being that cold. He had a his hair was fucking slamming at the end of that match. That shit. Oh I, yeah, dude. Oh man, that hair was hair. poofy. Holy Fuck moly, yeah. guacamole. Um, and then Harry the end was Gary. fine. The he- the end was great when they th- you know and Seth is selling the knee injury, which plays into night two, and they crash through the the barricade and fucking Cody has the upper hand on Roman, but then the Rock whips him with the fucking belt that says Mama Rhodes on it, like. All right, he hits the fucking rock bottom and the people's elbow, and he gets the win after Cody eats the spear. Like, that worked. It was all 36 minutes before that where I was like, God damn, pal. What about this thought from Matthew Birch? Rock threatening the ref pissed me off. If he could just threaten the ref to fire to fire the ref if he counts, shouldn't he just threaten him to fire him if, he te- if his team loses? Like, kind of makes a point. If we'll you can have that authority. Him. Like, yeah, if you're going to have that authority over the referee, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, why would Nick Patrick count any pinfalls in the NWO sold out pay-per-view if he's an NWO referee? Yeah. And also, Scott George brings up Gallus also trained with, uh, what's his nuts? The Rock. Oh, yeah. The Rock. What's Dwayne? We call him final Dwayne. boss. Yeah. The final boss. Is he still allowed to use that? Gives a shit. But uh, night one, good. They sent you, you know. Big question marks going into night two. Seth is hurt. Cody, how does he rebound from this? They also planted the seeds for the Rock got get the pin. The Rock got the pin over Cody. Can Roman do the same thing in night two? Ooh, yeah. Uh, they kicked off night two with Drew Seth for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship title uh, with CM Punk on commentary. I get why Punk was on commentary, but Punk's got to fucking let somebody get one over on him once in a while. <laughs> Jesus fucking oh, Christ. I mean, fucking McAfee bickering during Drew's entrance was like. No, but but Punk, like, I get it. Punk's supposed to be a dick, but you got to let your fucking opponent talk a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Is he like, supposed to be a dick? I mean, he kind of is, isn't he? Isn't that his M.O.? Like, he doesn't want to make friends, even though he makes a lot of friends, according to him? I don't yeah, know. Are you talking about... Are you talking about with Drew or with Pat McAfee? No, like just on commentary, like, and then with with the whole thing with Drew, like Drew's talking shit to him, and he's like, he's like, I can't hear you. It's like, <laughs> gives a shit. Shut up and listen. Even if you can't understand a word he's saying, let him talk. Yeah, but Tony, if you if you've been watching Raw, Drew McIntyre consistently buries CM Punk when he's not even there. He completely takes shots at him when he's not even yeah, there. Yeah, but he's a heel. Where's the shirt oh, with, with with the right and CM Punk? What is not going to talk back? No, wow. but when like. Drew is there, like, yelling at him after the match, and CM Punk's like, I got cans on. I can't hear you, pal. That's kind of like... It's a disrespect. That's it's making... like him, like, opening, like, taking down the fourth wall, being like... Yeah, they do that you... all the time now. Where? Someone sitting there says something like that? No, like, saying something tongue-in-cheek, like, breaking the fourth wall, like, breaking kayfabe. It happens all the time. 
Yeah, but not when the guy that's just fucking won the world title is talking shit to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you say, like, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You talk a lot of smack, but I hear you. Like, right, because he instead says, Instead of, like, like I, oh, I can't hear you. I got cans on, you I can't you hear you. I got cans on. And then, like, he, like, doesn't say anything, and then his demeanor changes. Like, he all of a sudden can hear him. May I say, that's uh, T on pills on commentary doing shit like that. That's where you would expect that from. Piece of shit. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, look, I, I, I did it. <laughs> I lived the life. I thought I didn't mind CM Punk out there at all. There was yeah. nothing. There was nothing that bothered me about the the sequence after the match. The, the match. Oh no, was, that the, the whole thing where he oh, like fucked up. Drew? It was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect. The the match. It's the match itself. Uh, his commentary wasn't like it wasn't horrible. I didn't like. I, there was nothing about him being out there that I hated. Uh, the match itself I found to be very enjoyable. And then afterwards, like I said, with Drew McIntyre standing on the table, like I almost, I, I almost disliked Drew more in that moment than I had prior to that moment, where he's standing on the on the announce table, knowing that CM Punk's injured, standing over him, yelling at him. And to me, CM Punk's response was the right response. It was the perfect response for him. You know what I mean? It worked for me. And then for him to do what he did afterwards, loved it. So like in that moment, I definitely, and I've been liking what Drew's been doing, but I definitely, that's where in my mind, he became even that much more heel to me, Drew did. And CM Punk's, CM Punk's reaction to it, I love just sitting back, letting, letting him run until he, you know, he, he, he put him down. I was fine with it. And the, the best line that he had, I think, was like, how does it feel to win the World Heavyweight Championship? And they're chanting, like, somebody else's name. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely perfect. Double T. Yep. Yeah, the match was, look, man, I, Seth Rollins, I know there's a lot of discussion about him after the weekend he had. Yeah. But, man, dude, dude is... Dude put his working boots on. He worked through this injury this whole time. Like, great match. You know, Drew had his moment. Great stuff. The fucking cash-in afterwards was beautifully done. Beautifully done. I Look, man, I don't think Damian Priest is a, as a world ch- – I don't see him as world championship material, but it'll be interesting to see who, who takes the title off of him. I'll tell you that. Can I make an early prediction? Yeah. Finn? You think Fergal? Fergal's Fergal, Fergal's had enough of Damien. Fergal McDivitt comes in and uh and takes it, maybe? Gunther? I still think it's it's Gunther's title. You think Gunther and, and Priest, huh? Well, because now now Punk is gonna be pivoting with McIntyre. McIntyre's kind we of don't know that. title picture, no? We don't know if McIntyre is gonna be around. That's probably why they cashed in just to play that safe. Yeah. It's a shame though, man. Hopefully McIntyre doesn't leave because I do like the gimmick. No, look, or maybe I, maybe I, maybe Punk is closer to returning than we think, and maybe we get that match. Everyone thought maybe SummerSlam we get that match. Maybe we get it sooner, and then Drew, if he doesn't sign, he leaves. Um, and then we get that match maybe in Saudi or something like that. I don't know. It's 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 uh, that's why it's so great. It's everything's up in the air. Hope Drew doesn't leave though. No, I look, if you're Drew, like you you've you've been you've been there through the lean times, right? You've been there when Vince is in charge and then like you're there now and like the freedom you've had since since before the Royal Rumble where you get to be this fucking badass fucking heel where Brian Cage is helping you do bench presses cuz you're like I don't give a fuck, you know. And and he's doing some of his best work and the idea of like he punk's gonna come back and you're gonna make big money with a drew mcintyre cm punk feud you right. know and and matt fuck mcintyre could go right after priest tonight true you know all the setup mcintyre punk for this title down the road like i i think it's a no-brainer for, for mcintyre and and you know they were really big this weekend on touting like this is a new era this is triple h's era vince is out like they couldn't have said it enough to your point earlier kjg like man like why wouldn't look we're going to get to talking about AEW later tonight, but, like, I don't think there's any, like, TNA is great if you're just kind of, like, looking to work, like, once a month and then do a bunch of indie shows, right? And, and AEW, I don't really know if you want to go there. Like, there's not a lot of room at the top. Where Drew has cemented himself right now, like, as a main fucking player here, like, it'd be silly for him not to go, not to re-sign with them. 
yeah i mean i mean at the end of the day it all it all depends on what he wants as like a as a human um which is something that we don't really talk about as as a a wrestling podcast but going back to the gunther damian priest type scenario one of these guys would have to turn babyface. no i think that i think that judgment day is closer to becoming a face faction because i really think that if you even with dom I was that's where my, my next point was going to be like Dom getting mixed up in this LWO and I can't pull the other name off the top of my head, but I think that creates an easy exit for him. Uh, obviously Rhea Ripley is, uh, she's a heel, yeah. but she is well loved. Yeah. I mean, Finn can easily, easily do that, that same old. And they cheered the hell out of Damian Priest cashing in and winning that title. So I, I think that they're not far away from making that, that face turn. Yeah, and as much as I love Damien, I love the. Like, I feel like people kind of cheer the moment more than they cheer the actual performer cashing it in. So, like, I'm kind of with Matt in terms of like, I just don't see him there yet. But like, also to Matt's point, we have to just see where it goes and can they make him a believable world champion, or does Drew come right back and 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 take it back? I think that would be terrible, <laughs> but uh, it's it's possible. And like Matt, do you think Damien or oh, HBWT? I'm sorry. Matt, uh, H B W T. I'm sorry. Do you think that Damian Priest has a long run in him? I mean, I, you know, again, you have to like. There's a couple different ways. Like, I think H K. Was that you or Tony that said, or t- I think it was K J G. Fergal. You know, if if Judgment Day splinters, look, you can run back Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre, but I think C M Punk continues to be a thorn in in McIntyre's side. Um, where it prevents McIntyre from winning that title. And then, ju- you know, Dr- yeah. Damian Priest's head could get too big for himself, where obviously Judgment Day is falling apart. They just lost the tag titles. Now he's the world champion, though. Him and Mommy, the rest of you guys are fucking losers. <laughs> you know, they've been kind of building that dissension with with Judgment Day for a while now. So you could go that route. And it's safe, right? Because Priest is going to get to work with Finn, and they're both... I think you gain a lot from working with Finn, who's been in that position before. Let me float this idea out there because I just, it literally just came into my head. What if, what if somehow Dominic Mysterio, like Triple H did with Shawn Michaels, ends up becoming the leader of Judgment Day and ousts either one or both of them and become, and Judgment Day is more heelish than ever, starts his own version of judgment day with new people and maybe they kind of feud with maybe he finn beats him to get to like priest i just I, for some reason i feel like dominic mysterio is such an awesome bad guy that he needs to like be the leader of something now it totally enhances his development and he thought about maybe dominic mysterio taking over judgment day that's well, just a, it's, it's, you're, that's a lot of moving pieces because he's right. also involved in this lwo storyline right yeah. Do you think that was the blow off or do you think they're going to continue that? I don't know. We'll have to find out tonight mm-hmm. on Raw. Uh, Philadelphia six man tag team street fight. Snoop is on commentary and Bubba Ray is your special guest referee. I know. Yeah, I know you love that. I did. He looks like fucking Alex Jones. Why no Devon? Man, why no Devon? Why don't we ever get Devon? This fucking Bubba's. He fucking eats this shit up. This fucking. Dickhead. Philly never Bridget. liked Devon, though, right? It was always "fuck you, Diva." Yeah. <laughs> no, when the Rumble was in Philly and Bubba Ray came in, they chanted, "We want Devon." And they should have got Devon. And they gave, they gave they gave us Truth and Bully, doing all their spots. Um, yeah. Uh, whatever. The Pride beats the Final Testament. The ladies get involved. Carrying Cross. That was a uh, cool spot for the ladies with the fucking yeah. leg sweep to the table. It was. It was, look. It was. And what's her not sold that fucking thing for like twenty minutes? Uh, she was Scarlett, still, right? Yeah, she was Scarlett Johansson. She was. She was still laying on the floor when they were like moving around. The moment that kind of took me out of it was when the table broke when they were gonna fucking you know finish the match, but then they were just like, oh well, fuck it, grab another table, and they did the <laughs> shit all over again. It was kind of funny. Like I like it sucked, but it you know shit happens. I thought it was kind of funny. Did you notice that during this match, they mentioned that Paul Ellering was never at a WrestleMania, and I'm pretty sure he was at WrestleMania 8 when LOD cut that promo and he came out with Rocco? He was. That, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of maybe they meant that he wasn't. What, 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 else, what else could he do? What else? Could <laughs> <Yeah>. he... <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoy. Yeah. I enjoyed the match. I Snoop Dogg on commentary was better than I thought it would be. Oh, he's fucking amazing. Yeah, so that was that was fine. That was absolutely fine for me. I I Bubba Ray as as the official, it worked for me, man. Like I there was there was there was once he started like helping out the Oh, when he put team, the glasses on, dude. Yeah, it was oh, fucking after, hilarious. And after then we found that could climb, go up, go up. Yeah, you could clearly <laughs> see him tell Karrion Cross to shove him. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I, yeah, I popped your... that he actually wore trousers, like he wore <laughs> slacks. Like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was fine for what it was. It was a fun match, and the pride gets their win. And Snoop is great on commentary. I wish he stayed. I wish he took McAfee's fucking place. <laughs> uh, La Knight, AJ Styles is next. La Knight gets a big WrestleMania win. They changed AJ Styles' entrance music. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm... Didn't like. I'm... Didn't like that. Um, More heelish, but they don't like it. Yeah. D- Look, man, you can they can book however they want. LA Knight's fucking over as shit, guys. Like that place, seventy thousand people fucking going, yeah. Yeah. Uh I mean, he's <laughs> fucking over. He's so fucking over. And I think, you know, to fast forward to the end of the night during Cody's celebration, like he's out there. Yep. And I don't think they're just having anybody who's anybody go out there and celebrate with Cody. So I thought that was huge. I thought this was a fine match. Um, they did that weird thing where they got into the, 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 the rub, the fight at WWE world. Um, yeah. The, the other day, thing. like really setting it up and, and, you know, good match. LA Knight with the win. I don't like, what's his finisher. Oh, oh the, the BFT. Blunt force trauma. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, a fucking stroke, but he grabs him by the head. Nah, it's yeah. wonky. I don't like it. Not a, I don't like it either. I like it. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it. How'd you guys feel bit, about the match? A little anticlimactic, to be honest with you, but I like the way it started, with, uh, just based on the intensity that the, that this feud has brewed over the last uh, few weeks and months. AJ Styles not waiting for any like uh, pomp and circumstance, taking off his gear and just running down to the ring and starting to fight. Loved it. And uh, I, I listen. I thought it was. I thought it was fine. I thought it was a good, solid upper mid card WrestleMania match. Yeah, I thought. I thought it was a good match. One thing I was going to ask you guys because uh, Tropic Al had asked me this: uh, Did AJ Styles look a beat off to you guys? Didn't. Not that I noticed off the top of my head, but this might be one of the matches that I need to watch a second time. I didn't notice it either, real time, and I haven't watched that match a second time yet, but. I was I was convinced he's like well he asked if it was just him but he was like yeah he looks a little bit off like he's he's skipping a beat here so AJ uh, you're talking about yeah yeah it, AJ it, thickened up quite a bit too yeah it could be possible too that just AJ and LA Knight might just not have good chemistry right yep um so LA, LA Knight's been in WWE for a little while AJ Styles has been there for a lot longer. I don't know if they've ever worked each other in TNA or, or Impact or anything like that. I don't think they have. But um uh it, it might just be like they just don't gel, but the story was there and the feud was there and they needed something. I would rather have seen LA Knight with Logan Paul yeah. and Randy Orton maybe work AJ and Kevin Owens in a triple threat, but again, neither here nor there. But I just think that it might just be that it could just be a chemistry issue. Yeah. yeah, you never know. Uh, Matthew Birch chiming in. AJ Styles' new theme song is awful. <laughs> Scott George uh, says he hasn't been good since he's been back. I'm guessing he's talking about AJ Styles. I thought he was good with Orton. The stuff he did with Orton was pretty good. And his last match with LA Knight wasn't terrible, but um, yeah. Hey, I, he's, I, no, it's, it's no spring chicken. Mm-hmm. You know, time Neither one of them are. Yeah, um, we had the U.S. title match, the, tri- the triple threat match: Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. Oh, fucking Nelly. hell, he's driving me nuts. I love this match. I thought this me match too. was fantastic. Um, everyone plays their part perfectly here, um, and I am not the biggest Logan Paul fan, but man, he is such a shit bird fucking heel. It's great. He's like fantastic. he that's like I know that's like the kind of person he is, I guess. Like if you followed his influencing career, as Tony would say, like he hasn't always been the the best guy. So it were it comes off very genuine. Like he's a fucking shit. Dude's athletic as fuck and, and it, 
Yeah, I really fucking like this. Did he do a springboard 450? Did he do a 450 in this match, or am I making? Am I just like reliving something that didn't happen? He did, but uh, he hit knees. He hit knees. Okay. Yeah. That's LA Knight right got his knees up. Yeah, I mean, dude does buckshot lariats. He does not 450s. Not. What's that? Oh wait, I'm so, no. Never mind. I was thinking of the. I was thinking of no. You're thinking of AJ. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think he. I don't know if he did. I. I'm, I had it in my head of AJ doing it to LA Knight. Maybe. Maybe it was just like the two buckshots. One he nailed perfectly. One he didn't kind of get. Um, I mean, he hit that frog splash at the end of the match. He gets yeah. air. Oh, yeah. Dude, everyone air. played and, their and role perfectly. Yeah, like the way said. Kevin Owens and, and Randy Orton played off each other. I put this in a group text last last night. Like, when, when does Randy Orton go on the Mount Rushmore? Never. Like how, how fucking good is Randy Orton? He's so man? good. Yeah, but never, to answer your question. If I was starting a promotion, he'd be the first guy I drafted. Hundred percent, he can do it all. When he fucking put I show speed up on the table after he was barking at him, and he goes, "Orf, orf, orf," and he fucking <laughs> RKO's him into the table. Anybody else find it a little interesting that everybody was doing shit on the commentary table, but it only broke during the main event? Yeah, right. Isn't that a little odd? Like you think that was I'm planned? Like, never thought because they were that. doing shit on that commentary table all night long. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, it's a great call. Too much commentary table for me. Yes. It was it was too much a lot of the overlapping. It's kind of hard to have it's kind of hard to have like, you know, the 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 street fight with no rules and then your main event is also a fucking street fight with no rules. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's weird. Did anyone go to the Spanish announce table? Yes. It happened during the main event, didn't it? The Cody Rock No, that was the night one. Um Somebody went through the Spanish because both tables were down in that, at, in that at, the, at the end of the show. Uh, the John Cena yeah. put Sola Sokoa through the Spanish. That show. was it. Oh, yep. Nailed it. Well, in case uh, you're wondering, The Rock's going to be the first challenger for Cody. There you go. Spoiler alert. Oh, really? <laughs> that's the way that's the way it's looking because The Rock's in the ring with Cody right now. And he gave Cody his fucking flowers. Go for I, mean, I, thought, I thought Rock was done. Oh, no. I thought Rock was going to Hollywood in May. No, no, no. No no no. Uh, no 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 nope 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 and, nope and what the fuck is with the rock coming out with this people's champion belt now and holding it up and shit can we f- fuck off did you, really did you not see the hall of fame did you no but fuck off like all of a sudden like he what are we fucking aew we're just handing out belts now to everybody <laughs> like seriously brother that's my gimmick how <laughs> you think those are up on wwe shop yet a hundred fucking percent are you kidding me uh so logan paul is successful uh, he retains. He's still your U.S. champion. Uh, women's title match. Bailey defeats Io Sky to become the WWE Women's uh, Champion. Uh, I think that's her first solo win at WrestleMania because everything else has been like tag matches, right? Yeah. Her first one-on-one win. Yes. Uh, they started off. I said in the tag. They started off a little slop city, but they once they got going, they were fucking locked in. These two ladies. This was a great match. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. It, this. The triple threat for the U.S. title was my favorite match until this match. Hey, so you know, awesome. call me crazy. Bailey, a little thicker, a little older, kind of digging it. Of course you are. Kind of digging it. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it, it kind of. It's like when you go to your friend's party when you're like a younger fella, mm-hmm. and like his aunt is there. Yeah. And she may not be the prettiest mommy or relative at the party, but. You could tell she knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Yep, go on. Yeah, kind of. Gwen you know. Stefani, will you pee pee on me? He, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I don't think Bailey's a pee pee kind of girl. But oh god, isolate that now, Eric Freed's your fucking hand job. <laughs> the Scott George, whoever relative does it. at the party, Tony. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. The like relative at the party. I don't. Well, not your relative because you're going to your. Oh my god, house, that's a like, great call, HK. <laughs> 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 You know, like, you don't want to mess with your friend's mom, but, like, you know, your friend's aunt, you know, she's looking pretty good, you know? <laughs> just saying. You watch a lot Why of not? movies where you think, like, you can just go to your friend's house and fuck their family members. <laughs> yeah, they're all on Pornhub. He's watching Free Use Family Reunion. Yeah. <laughs> hey, could you get closer to your camera while you watch Raw, dickhead? <laughs> 
there's some weird shit going on right now. It's just, right. it's fucking unexplicable. I don't know what they're doing. You're unexplicable. unexplicable. Uh, HK, th- thoughts on the ladies' championship match here? <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to compare it to uh, <laughs> the oddest relative, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I was I'm right with you. I think that you you, were, you nailed it in the in the text the other day. They did start off a little slop city, uh, cleaned it up. Really enjoyed really enjoyed the match overall. Uh, I was Bailey's entrance. I didn't really care for. I no, thought, me neither. Yeah, I thought it was kind of it looked kind of fucking goofy and, and just just dumb. Really, like, were uh, you guys waiting for the fucking things to come yes, out? Yes, that's what I want. Hundred percent. That is what I want. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, didn't happen but the match itself like it, it was a, it was a fine match i think i think they did a great job once it like once they found their groove but it, it took them a couple moments to find the groove that's for sure can i just tell you i'm an idiot okay hk going back to like the entrance like, if harsh. you're gonna do it like put her on like the macho man like the macho king, the sedan like, put him on the yeah, sedan like, put, yep. yeah, put her on that if you're gonna do it it just looks so like goofy and clunky and weird right yep yeah. i'm with you which is again i know we're picking nits about wrestlemania and obviously this is a majority show about wrestling but wrestlemania is a lot about showmanship it's a lot about the presentations and the entrances so if you're gonna do it fucking do it yeah like yeah, yeah. i really wanted the bailey buddies yeah really. i thought we were gonna get it yeah after she came off the fucking shoulders of four J Brones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a d- down where she lives, there's a an Egyptian park. So that's oh. why she's I've been there. Thanks, Corey Graves. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. That, I guess I don't know. Make something fucking... up that's more entertaining than that. Yeah, I, I can... wanted fucking Paramore to play her out. I thought that's what <laughs> we were gonna like walk like an Egyptian, then. How about that? How yeah, about... get the dun, fuck, dun, 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 yeah, get the dun, bangles dun, to come dun, out. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Susan Hoffman ain't doing nothing but getting finger blasted by Tony at his friend's house. That's right. <laughs> right. You what's, her, finger... what's her What's her name, Matt? What's her name? Susan Hoffman. And Susan, Susan... Hoffman getting finger yeah. blasted by Tony. I thought it was Susan Hoff, wasn't it? No, I thought it was Hoffman. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. It's Susan Hoffs. She a relative of the Blue Meanie. I don't know she's she's not looking bad at sixty five though. This is the kind of aunt Tony's talking about. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> gonna ask her to change the laundry, Tony. Bro, she's not looking bad, bro. <laughs> she's not. Tony's gonna be like, do that whistling spot from the song. <laughs> she get her on the. Bang <laughs> <laughs> like an Egyptian. Yeah, Susan Hoffs is looking nice. Fuck nice yeah, nice for sixty five. No, that ain't bad at all. See, that's see, see, HK. That's the kind of aunt Tony's looking for. No, it's got to be Bailey, bro. It's got to be Bailey. Yeah, be aunt like Bailey. With, with her control top pantyhose and control. What, all that what? shit? I don't know. What, what's control don't top the older pantyhose? ladies need the control top to hold that shit in? I don't know. What is? <laughs> Wait, right, make sure the all... Arby's doesn't fall off the roll. <laughs> Wait, like it goes all the way up? Yeah, control top. All the way up. Yeah, like if... <laughs> all the way what? up. All the way up, like what, like <laughs> it, like ink tattoos up to the neck, like all the way up. Yeah, I ain't going that far, but yeah, all the way up. Oh, I never heard of such a thing. Control top pantyhose. <laughs> there they are, and all their bloom and glory, bloom and glory. Uh, so Bailey wins. <laughs> She's the WWE She's Women's a Champion. Fucking winner. She is a winner. On to the main event. This is what we've waited two years. Uh, to happen since Cody run the 2023 Royal Rumble. One, yeah, almost two years. Um, Cody Rhodes defeats Roman Reigns in a Bloodline Rules match. What did you guys think of this spectacular? Not all at once. I'm kind of freezing over here, so I don't know who is... What the deal is so let, was like, bro any, why do you get aggravated media? just watch wrestling and have fun now I, I if no one's gonna speak i will speak to this i enjoyed the shit out of this i'm I with really you did. <laughs> i usually hate this shit this overbooked craziness but everything fit to a t every person involved had some kind of involvement in the story it all made sense to me yeah a little, a little too much for my liking. Just, I mean, just, just a little too much. I, I like the match. I, I definitely enjoyed what they did. Uh, I, I still don't, I don't like the, the music, right? 
hitting before the the wrestler comes out like i, I just and that's just one of my own personal like what are they standing in back all right hit my music i'm gonna run out there now and save my buddy like that that part i don't like i get why they do it it's just my own personal i i, I, don't, I don't like it um the match itself i enjoyed uh cody cody winning was amazing like i was so happy in the moment i just wish there would have been maybe a little bit less maybe just a little bit less of the of the bullshit right and i, I was like a, a couple of weeks ago or last week or whatever i was like i really hope they don't include these other guys uh, other than like the people that actually mattered in the story at the time but they did a decent job enough explaining why Cena was there because they said that Solo Sokoa took him out. He beat, Solo Sokoa beat John Cena. Right. So yes. him being there made sense for the bloodline. Yes. If someone can explain to me why they did Seth Rollins so dirty, all fucking three appearances on his fucking pay-per-view, uh, I don't know. But does the Shield entrance, gets immediately disposed of. Um. And if also, if someone can explain to me why the Undertaker showing up instead of Austin was like the move to make, what is like, th did Roman ever have, or did Undertaker ever have any issues with the actual bloodline or just Roman? He beat Roman. Roman, no, Roman beat him at WrestleMania. Oh, that's right. That was his, wait, no. Oh, yes, that was after Brock. Yes. And that's when he put the, that was Orlando, wasn't it? Or no? Yes, it was. And then he put his boots in the ring and his hat yes. and his coat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, uh, just like Damien uh, Dragon. <laughs> I was thinking about that when I was walking upstairs <laughs> to do this show. Like the first year we did this podcast and we did WrestleMania and we did WrestleCon and we did all this shit. And then the fucking week after we have all this shit to talk about, these great experiences we had. And we had fucking Damien Dragon on the show to talk about him leaving his fucking boots in the ring. And I was so fucking <laughs> mad the whole fucking show because we barely talked about fucking WrestleCon and our whole experience. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I, You know, it's WrestleMania. The Undertaker, I guess, is synonymous with WrestleMania. You want to give those people that moment. You can say because Roman beat him at 33. Who knows if Austin was available? We were talking about it in the text. Austin coming out to stunner the Rock one more time. 21 years after their last match at WrestleMania, the place would have come fucking unglued. But I think I don't think come anyone fucking. had. I don't think anyone had Undertaker on their bingo card for this. So I think maybe that was just there to have that moment. And it got it. They delivered. Don't get me wrong. It fucking delivered for what it was, for sure. And I think Seth, Seth in the shield, and and Roman picks up the chair and he can hit Cody or Seth. It kind of goes back to I. The, the, I think they want you to think like Roman still hasn't gotten over that when Seth turned on the shield with the shot, the chair shot to the back. Yeah, they made the point. So I think that was the them putting a bow on that maybe. How about the production, though? Not even showing Seth at all until he gets Superman punch and you don't even fucking see it. Yeah. Like, really. I agree. That was like a fucking... That was a what the fuck for me, too. Well, that's, you could you can tell that there's different people in charge. You know, like, we never would have saw... Uh, we have never would have seen Bully Ray get caught saying, okay, shove me to carry and cross right before... Like, like clearly it's a new regime yeah. and new people are doing new things so they got to tighten up a little bit but yeah they Maybe. missed that that was a bummer but overall fucking great yeah no, fucking great fuck dude it was fuck it was the match was great um somebody had sent me a message on saturday and they were like i just don't get cody he does nothing for me his move set is very boring get out of get out of life <laughs> get out of life wow I mean, look, man, you know, how many times are you going to jump on the ropes for one of your moves before somebody fucking counters you? He oh, my God. And the Everybody, kick. man. How do we have a match with four Mexican wrestlers and none of them fucking had to stand on the top rope for 45 seconds <laughs> to wait for the other three assholes to catch them? Seriously. Never. Are you guys are you guys <laughs> like having problems with your signal because it's coming across really choppy on my end? I am not. I thought I thought I was, but I, everything looks okay to me now. No, I'm aces. No, my shit is like jacked up, and, and my signal's fine too. Did you? I don't know what's I going like, on. I keep cutting in and out. 
when you try to like look up a photo of something, I feel like that's when you kind of. <laughs> You know, like you're looking up fucking old panties. Yeah, crop top. No, no, hose. that that was a while, that was a while ago. That that's when it started though for me. Crop top hose. But yeah, Cody finished the story, man, and uh, and then Samantha Irvine, her she, like she couldn't keep it together, and she got like all the as Tony likes to say, all the flowers this weekend. Amazing job by her, bro. The Fink never would have fucking cracked. The Fink would have nailed every fucking call. An old man pony. So think would have fucking like laughed in the face of all the emotion and did his and new fucking think man rest in fucking peace, dude. Now I I don't disagree with you, Tony. That yeah, think probably would have nailed. No wait, KJG, wait, motherfucker, wait, (laughs) wait, motherfucker, wait, wait, motherfucker, wait. Think wait, wait, motherfucker, wait. Wait, got the little wind on the way wait, to the wait, 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 motherfucker, wait. Motherfucker, wait. Wait, motherfucker, wait. Wait, motherfucker. Wait, motherfucker. Piece of shit, jerk off. Motherfucker, wait. Fink, Russ, you don't know. Por- Fink. Fink would have. You're right, Tony. He would have not missed a beat. It would have been fine. But I do not hold anything against her for cracking in the moment, showing emotion, it almost, it almost for me, it almost added to it. Oh, you know what I mean, like, awesome. it, and and people were shitting on her for that. Like, fuck, she's she's happy. Fuck, she's crying tears of goddamn joy. What? Why the fuck? Yeah, it's a, it's a celebration, Chase. Right? That's it, man. Look, <laughs> you know who wasn't shitting on her? HB Double T, Michael who? Buffer. Yeah, Michael put Buffer put her over. Look, yeah. is it, but is it? At, we're all here. For a reason, right? You at some point in your in your life, you got emotionally invested into professional wrestling, right? And you'd be full of shit if you sat here and told me you've never shed a tear for a wrestling moment or some tribute to somebody. You're full of shit. I know every single one of us have. Okay? Right last night. So she was fucking there, man. Like she knows the dude. She's been there f- for the whole thing. There's fucking seventy-two thousand people are going nuts, and she gets to make the announcement that he's the brand new WWE Universal Champion. Like that's awesome. Huge. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. Agreed. She does a phenomenal job. Eat shit, Tony. Go f- fuck the the, the 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 Fink's dead body. All right? How do you like them apples? Why? Yeah. Fuck the Fink's aunt. Yeah, fuck yeah. the things off. <laughs> I bet she's really hot now, though. Yeah, yeah. I bet you she's thick as a brick. <laughs> she's probably thick 95. Jesus. Ah, right here, wheelhouse. Show. You give her a sponge bath. <laughs> oh, The Rock left, by the way. He's not challenging Cody. He walked off into the sunset. Uh, thanks. Oh, was there like a sunset on the, the Titan Tron? Yes. Then Adam and he Page fucking, came out. He rode off on a wooden horse. I think it was fucking Pepe. <laughs> Ah, Pepe appearance. Nice. It wasn't Jonko? <laughs> no. Um, we got a debut on Raw tonight, too. That's all I'm saying. They don't tell me. Yeah. I mean, you can tell all me right. Tony, Tony's me. fucking fully invested in Monday Night Raw. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to keep up, dude. It's the, it's the fucking Monday after WrestleMania, the Raw after WrestleMania. I know. I know. I got to bring us breaking news if anything breaks, but so far, nothing's broken. Does... Uh, anything else about WrestleMania before we put a bow on this? Just the, the after show. Like you mentioned, like crying. Like, dude, I cried. Like him going out to hug Cole and him like doing all that stuff. And I'm a sucker for shit like that. So yeah, it was the the calling out Bruce and calling out Triple H was awesome. It was just like a legit like Bruce got fat as shit. Well, he just had like two surgeries on his fucking shoulders, man. What he did he eat? Fucking- the surgeons. That's right. Yeah, what the fuck? What does the sol- sh- shoulder shoulder know. surgery have to probably, do with? Probably can't walk or go to the gym or anything. Yeah, like but that. apparently his arms are still working because he's shoveling food into his mouth. <laughs> yeah, they don't know that. I was waiting. You don't know that. His wife put a fucking funnel down his throat. <laughs> Here, probably. eat this, you fat fuck. Yeah, yeah eat this shit. Yeah, what's your excuse, Tony? <laughs> if anything, he had fucking shoulder surgery. He shouldn't be able to shovel shit into his mouth. Oh. Vacation was good to me, KJG. <laughs> A few too many uh, burgers at Hogan's Hangout. <laughs> what are the prices on those burgers? Thirty-five thousand dollars. No, typical like thirteen, fifteen bucks. I think they were. It wasn't yeah, bad. Oh, yeah. Not bad. No. Cheap as shit. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't bad. For a chain I'm like sorry. that. I'm sorry. Did you say thirty-five bucks for a burger? 
No. no I said I 13 or 15. Oh, okay. Which is not bad at all. No. No. And by the way, it wasn't $75 for me to sing karaoke. It was $75 for me and my family to go to right. the event. Yeah. Mott Spock wants to know, a debut is not breaking news? It is breaking news. Yeah, just saying. Well, can I, can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Is it Dragonoff? Yes, and he just defeated Collarbone to defend the title. Collarbone? Yeah. HK, you know who uh, Collarbone Nakamura. is? Nakamura. Yeah, there you go. Good call, HP Double T. That'd be a good. That'd be a good uh, little uh, entrance feud for him. him what, and collarbone. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Dragonoff beat Nakamura on Raw. Yep. NXT champ. Oh, there. What are they? And doing? he gave him that silly little elbow thing, and he beat him. I like that elbow thing. And Nakamura went. Come on! <laughs> Here, I got your breaking. Yeah. News. I got breaking news for you. Uh oh. Bum, 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 bum. April twenty sixth. Night one of the WWE draft will take place on SmackDown. April 29th, night two of the WWE draft will take place on Raw. 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 It's time to shake things up again. Ah. Is Is this a top five WrestleMania? Well, that depends, Matt. What's in the top four? Yeah, yeah. What, what do we? What? Who got to the finals? And yeah, what's in the final four, yeah, dude? What's in the final four of the WrestleMania brackets? Well, no, it was you... 20, 17, 19, and ten. Is that it? I believe you're right. There. 20, 17, shit. 19, and ten. Is there? It, does this slide into number five, or does it top one of those other? Well, now look. This is just voted uh, on by the the fans. I mean, Good now God. you have to hold the recalibrate. I'd I say definitely know. top ten. I don't know. I'd have to go back through the list. I mean, there's been forty of them. It's a lot to keep track of. I really like last year's. Like, I really yeah. Like I enjoyed fans. the shit out of last year too. Yeah. No. So, like, do I put this above last year? Even though I've been begging for Cody to finish his story, and it was huge. But do I put it over? I guess I have to, right? Because yeah, I man. was, I guess I kind of have to put this one better than that. Yeah, I, I, I'd say it's top, it's, it's top five. I'd say for me, for sure. Yes. Maybe I should do a top five on the top five of the top five. I, uh, I, I'm kind of with Tony. I, I think it's definitely top ten, like for sure. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Five or not i'll have to t- i'll have to watch it again right you know but like it's and that's the, i don't want to do that like instant reaction where you're like oh this is better than everything else i've seen because i don't know if it necessarily is i think that the the story of cody and roman going into it and the main event i think yeah. that 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 is one of the best stories that they've paid off in a yes. wrestlemania but I don't know. As an entire event, it would it would make the top five. But it, it's it's so funny because it's two nights, and there's so much to dissect and so much it's, to think about in terms of like what you enjoyed and what you this could have done without. I feel like there was way more on this show that I enjoyed than I could have done without. Like you have Rhea and um, and Becky, you have uh, Bailey and Io. You have the two main events. You have Seth and Drew. You have the cash in. You have. All these great things, the, the plunder of the of the ECW type Philly street fight. You have the Hall of Fame guys coming out, Paul Heyman, not showboating, just coming out, doing his thing and standing there, and the crowd went nuts. That ECW theme, it was very, very special. And I feel like, to me, there's a lot more that I love than not only that I didn't love, but that I, not even, like, I didn't even like, like, you know what I mean? Like, there was so much more positive than negative on this on these shows. Yeah. Yeah, I think it lived up to the hype. I think it was a great WrestleMania. I think we all enjoyed it. Sure did. Looking forward to next year. Yeah, next year. Look, man, I I'm gonna put this into the ETH, the universe now. I say if it's in Minnesota, come on over. HK's got three house guests. I got I got room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, motherfucker! Wait, motherfucker! Wait! <laughs> Man, Tony, you're either my eyes are fucked up, or your face is super duper red. It's gotten red. Looks yeah, red. it's gotten a little bit more red. I think it's the TV. 
the raw right. logo. What'd you do? I'm trying to fix it. I don't know. Tony's going to get the raw logo that. tattooed on his head. You can't fix your face that quickly. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. We still want to talk. I guess we could touch on NXT and Hall of Fame if you guys uh, want to. A little AEW Ring of Honor stuff and then pull this train to the station. If you're asking about Mania Madness, your finals, WrestleMania 17 against WrestleMania 10, people. That's where we are for the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And I'll put that poll up uh, on Twitter tomorrow, X, whatever you want to call it. So be sure to follow at Wizards Podcast. Uh, Tony, do you have the, the thing ready? That's a nice final. <laughs> no, I don't. Give me a minute. My bad. <laughs> yeah, wait, motherfucker. <laughs> wait, motherfucker, wait. <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> God damn, yo. Instead of answering your question, let me just comment on what you said the statement prior. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, we're, we're, look, we're good at what we do. Great point. Uh, Back after this. That's my man. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in every Monday night to listen to The Shining Wizards. If you'd like to continue to support us outside of listening, we've got a few ways for you to do that. If you shop at Amazon, go over to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com, do your shopping as usual, and when you make your purchase, a little bit of that purchase price will go back to support the show. If you like to wear t-shirts, Merch.ShiningWizards.com will take you to our Pro Wrestling Tees store, where we've got over a dozen great designs from over 11 years of professional wrestling podcasting. You can become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash wizards podcast. And the more you support us, the more things that you're entitled to receive. And believe me, they are fantastic. Continue to listen to us wherever you listen to us on the World Wide Web. And make sure you like, rate, review, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Helps us out. And we can continue to bring you the love fest that is The Shining Wizards. It's time for your weekly lineup of shows on the Shining Wizards Network. On Mondays, check out the latest from Gorilla Brain, featuring the year of Duke and Rogue, covering the history of wrestling year by year. Also from Gorilla Brain is the Tots Pod with handsome Kevin and Loverboy Al, telling people to get off the lawn and reviewing wrestling figures. Also on Mondays, get your horror fix with 30 Screams or Less featuring Steve and Corey, where they review a horror film in 30 minutes or less. Monday Night's Live, it's The Shining Wizards, where it's wrestling talk and talk about wrestling. Wednesday Nights, it's the Mark Order Podcast, covering everything AEW with Ant Money, Kate the Great, Ryan Schlong, and Asian Joe. Get your metal fix on Fridays with Snowy and Aaron on Radioactive Metal, the longest-running metal podcast on the planet. Saturdays, it's High Five Tom and Will Mercier on ROH Revelry, covering the history of Ring of Honor. On Sundays, it's an inconclusive breakdown with Justin and Vince, covering the week in pop culture, politics, and more. The Shining Wizards Network also features other great shows, including Bread Club, where Kieran and Matt cover everything New Japan Pro Wrestling. The Brocast, where brothers Alan and Tom watch some of the greatest and not-so-great matches in wrestling. Turnbuckle Throwbacks, where the Impact Playa Feel Rea discusses current wrestling while paying homage to the past. And Wrestling Night in Canada, where Snowy, Matt, and Dustin put a North of the Border perspective on the world of wrestling. Enjoy all the great shows on the Shining Wizards Network. Entertainment, here. For centuries, women have tried to enhance the size of their breasts because women know that itty bitty titties just don't stack up. After all this time, 21st century technology has provided the ladies with a modern miracle of science. Introducing Curve Crafter 5000 for the ultimate in cleavage construction. A technological breakthrough with two simple suction cups. Ladies, you can suck your way to the size of your dreams. And if you act now, you get the sweater stretcher absolutely free to guarantee firmness and a full bosom that people with any pronouns will enjoy. For the Curve Crafter 5000 and the free sweater stretcher, call now at 551-333-1030 for only $29.99 plus $5 shipping and handling or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Yes. 
Curve Crafter We're back. 5000. HPK was in the NWO, so this still works. <laughs> no, I wasn't complaining. I'm not saying you were. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. well, well, that was fun. A lot of WrestleMania talk. Hope you guys enjoyed WrestleMania. Make sure you let us know uh, in the uh, when you leave a review on YouTube. You know, just go in there, hit that thumbs up button, and leave a little comment. Let us know what you think. Chad is hopping, rocking, and rolling. My Spock, Scott George, Matthew Birch, uh, Alan Day popped in for a little bit there. Um, Danny Russ was here earlier. Mike Peterson, all the all the usuals. We can't thank you guys enough for hanging out with the Wizards on your Monday night. Uh, with it being Raw Mania or whatever goofy shit we're calling it, um, I tried. I tried very hard to watch the Hall of Fame. I don't know how anyone enjoys that. I, I watched Paul Heyman, and that, that it was and thankfully awful. I got your message that the rest of it. You didn't like Paul Heyman's speech. What? You can be canceled a hundred times as long as you don't get canceled on the hundred and first time? I don't give a shit. This is the guy who fucking swindled half of his locker room out of money, never paid him, kept using Candido and Sonny's credit card even when they weren't with the company, never paid him back. Like, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but, like, I'm not going to fucking kiss his feet. He's still a fucking scumbag. Let him have his day, dude. He can. It wasn't great. He said, suck my fucking dick if you think ECW died in <laughs> bankruptcy court. Ooh. I yeah, it was it. a lot with the cursing, too. I don't know. It wasn't. It, look, man, I, I've never watched. I don't think I've ever watched the Hall of Fame from start to finish. It was it was Paul Heyman did nothing for me. I thought he was going to have like more. Um, the fucking Alundra Blaze was atrocious. That's exactly where I like stopped. So bad and and poor bull nakano i know she doesn't speak the, the american language great but like that was hard to and you could tell like it me and hk were talking about this before the show started like you could tell how much it meant to her yep right but it's just she, she has to convey it in a language she's not 100 percent fluent in can i ask you a question real quick just as yeah. an aside who's as an aside. who's the weird guy with judgment day the guy that they kind of had he looks like a waterhead version of Chris Benoit, doesn't he? What's a waterhead? <laughs> Google it, man. It's fucking 2024. You know what I use? I, I, I don't want to be able to be on my phone. I, I mean, you were on your phone for the start of the show. That's why I took you out I, of the screen. I know. I know. I'm sorry about that. That was. I'll, I'll explain that. I'll explain that afterwards. Um, sorry about that. Uh, like Jesus when Daryl Strawberry Tony. drank the it. fucking <laughs> potion in The Simpsons. I get what you're saying. <laughs> I can't unsee it now. It's like Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta's fucking superhuman. You can't unsee it. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus crimity. Jesus crimity. Um, crimity McGimity. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, man. All these guys reading off the teleprompter, just like, it sounded so fucking oh. fun. So phony. <laughs> Fucking Mike Rotunda was like, I play football at Syracuse, and then I was a wrestler, and I'm like, Skip, I don't care. Yeah, like, no, I get it. It's sad. Your son passed away unexpectedly. Like, okay. And then I don't know. I, I got like 10 minutes in the Thunderbolt Patterson. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> that's how it was. That's all. And then he's like, going like you said, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, heaven and hell. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? I said, it's time. And like the fucking new day has to stand here as fucking Butler. Who's the white dude? <laughs> Who's the white dude? It's 2024. Oh. It's his caretaker. No, it was. <laughs> it was a waterhead. He was the wrestler. He's like, he's like, we couldn't send uh, Thunderbolt Patterson. Couldn't go to Georgia or Texas because the sheriff drew a drew a, a sketch that looked like Thunderbolt Patterson for killing the sheriff's wife. And I'm like, what the fuck? The fucking new day has to stand over twenty minutes while this loon, this old man rambles about nothing. So maybe it was a rib on the new day, and they knew that it was going to be like that, so they made him stand there. I don't know. I. I enjoyed Heyman. Yeah, me I too. I felt bad for Bull Nakano. Medusa was was shit, but Bull knowing like you could see the emotion, like how much it meant to her, and that was a special moment for her. And I was I was super happy for her to have that, but also kind of felt bad because it did not. It was it was kind of 
it was just it was rough you know what i mean it was just rough to to, to listen to um well, Medusa was never really known for cutting a promo anyway. No, no, not at all. And then God, Thunderbolt was don't start with don't start with a prayer. J- don't don't do that. Oh, let me. the guy no, pray, nah, bro. No, Look, no, I tur- no, I turned no. it off 10 minutes in. I don't know how long the prayer went. How long did the prayer <laughs> went go? Dude, I was I was like, I'm like, I gotta I wanna watch the Hall of Fame. Like, this is gonna be something we talk about. And I got I watched Heyman. I was like, oh my God, this is like fucking fifty five minutes. I'm never gonna be able to get back. So I skipped to Bull Nakano and that was terrible. And then I, I watched the midnight US Express, whatever. Then I got the Thunderbolt Patterson. And I'm like I'm like, this is what what is going on? Like how much longer did he do a prayer for twenty five minutes? What did he do, HK? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, and, and the funny thing is, is that he kept on going back to things that he had already said, which which threw me off. I was like, can we just can we just play the music? Like, just play the music. Get get him out of there. Uh, U.S. Express was even though I didn't fucking care for Thunderbolt Patterson, at least I could find some humor in it, whether it was meant to be there or not. I just felt bad for U.S. Express. Oh, so depressing. Like it, it, it looked like they didn't plan a fucking thing. Uh, Rotunda just kind of rambled on for, for a while. Uh, they didn't like, they didn't, and then in the end where he's like, it looked like they were both looking on their phone. Like they were searching their phone and right. he was like, wait, are we going to, we, oh, oh, we're going to do that. And, and IRS is like, yeah, I can't find the thing on the, the thing. I can't find it. The, the flashlight. I was like, fucking prepare, man. They're fucking old prepare. people, dude. Doesn't mean you can't prepare a fucking speech. Yeah, but they, it looked like Rotunda when he came out. It almost looked like he like was prepared to like read his speech on his phone. Yeah, because like he had it like very prominently displayed, mm-hmm. and then he just put it down, and then it was just like, whoops! Like yeah. I forgot. He that didn't the, know the his screen, fucking the, the, code yeah, to unlock it. And yeah, shit. The, the screen will lock <laughs> soon at some point. Yeah. So <laughs> that was that was rough, and then the the all the rock bullshit. I didn't really. I get, sure. Like I I understand they deserve being in the 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 Hall of Fame. Both uh, Muhammad and I'm drawing a blank on the name now. Really? What's her name? Maya Via. Yeah, like both of them, right? I'm okay with them being yes. inducted in the Hall of Fame, but I didn't like the whole all of that whole mess. Just wasn't there for me. So I think Heyman was definitely the best speech of the night and the most enjoyable for me. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of went a little bit downhill from there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's and it's not that I don't have a problem with the class because I think right. I put that in the Discord. Like this is fucking boring me to death. Um, it's not that I have no problem with the class. I understand. Like Scott George went on this like fucking diatribe. Like this is why I'm. I have no problem with them being there. Right. But these guys are like in their fucking seventies. Like you can't put them up there for like. It's like taking them to the fucking grocery store. You got to keep an eye on them, or you're gonna end up with a cart full <laughs> of fucking depends and shaving cream. Like what? Are, what are we doing? Like. And it's time to go down aisle five. I say, I say, I say, I say now. And he's, like, he's looking at the new day and they're like awkwardly looking at him. And I'm like, holy shit, this is, I, I got to go get ready. I like, this is about 10 minute shower. Or else. F- this is a 10 minute shower or 15 minute shower for me. And I'm going with the 15 minute shower right now. <laughs> I'm not watching this maniac talk for another 10 minutes. HK, to me, this, the night went exactly as the inductions were announced, like you know, oh, what I'm saying yeah, like Paul yeah. Heyman, Paul Heyman was the first one. Mm-hmm. Awesome to me. Yep, yep. They had everything else was just like, all right, okay, I see it, I get it. They deserve mm-hmm. to be there, but I don't really want to hear them. Right. Like, like that's how like it progressively got to that level. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it was definitely not my. And I've watched. I think I've seen all of the Hall of Fame ceremonies. Probably my least favorite. Hold and on. I I got I got I got I got Scott George. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. You millennials don't appreciate good wrestling. These old shit bags rambling on for twenty minutes has nothing to do with fucking wrestling. I will Scott George. I'd like to know that. How old are you, Scott? It has nothing to do. Zero. I also zero. Hate, I also hate the setup too. By the way, brutal setup. Zero. Nailed it. Zero. Do, do, do I want to watch a depressing Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham talk about his fucking dead kid? No, it's fucking sad. Man, I want to well, celebrate. You... I want to celebrate them being the U.S. Express. I don't fucking sit there and be depressed and watch them fumble with their fucking phones. 
They're old, dude. I know, so don't put them out there. Let's just not put anybody in the Hall of Fame. How you like no, um, Jesus Christ. Is everyone over fucking 50 years old brain dead? I have no problem with them being in the Hall of Fame. But you are the fucking WWE of the production crew to do whatever you want. Sit these guys down and fucking pre-tape something to put on the screen. Well, Matt, maybe this ties back to what you the point you made earlier about how it's a new regime, new people in charge. Maybe they tighten it up a little bit, like you said before, perhaps. This is probably part of it. I don't have no problem with these guys going in the Hall of Fame. My problem is they're fucking boring as shit when they go up there. I don't give a fuck about Mike Rotunda wrestling at Syracuse. They're yeah. reading off this goddamn teleprompter. It's a truck. That's where he wrestles. Alundra right? Blaze is like, Bro. she's like, Bulo no and, uh, and then you like, you can see her eyes like moving with the fucking teleprompter. And I'm like, what? This is bad. Alundra Blaze said, Bulo Nakano. Oh my God. She was fucking off. It was bad. Sorry. Hall of Fame class. Two thumbs up. They all deserve to be there. Putting them in front of a crowd to do a fucking speech, they need to change that. They can't. And The Rock brings out his own fucking belt. Now he's carrying it around both nights of WrestleMania like you fucking asshole. Stop. Yeah, and they gave her the fucking oh, Orient awesome. Express music. I was fucking pumped about that. That was Come great. Come on. That was great. What you want to have? Yokozuna's music? Yeah. G- give her a fuck. I don't know. Use her fucking Japanese music from when she was in all Japan. Nah. Don't use the same fucking recycled music that you've used for every fucking Japanese wrestler, you racist dick shits. Oh, what, yeah, the racist. Uh, Bull, N- Bull and Nakano. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> fucking Alundra Blaze did. Watch the fucking shitty interview she did. Maybe she was stuttering like you do, and she said Bull You're uh, right, Nakano. Scott George. I don't watch the fucking Hall of Fame ceremonies because they're fucking stupid. I watched the one where Mr. T talked about his mother for 45 minutes. I'll never get the, the time back. But I did he talk about his attractive aunt? <laughs> <laughs> She probably looked like fucking uh, Wheezy Jefferson. <laughs> A- Anta Nakano. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Aggravating. People not hearing the words coming out of my mouth. Let, let me let me let me ask you this though: What yeah. other Japanese wrestler in WWE history that used that music is ever going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame? Dude, the Orient None Express of them. should be in the Hall. So it's her. Orient but so it's her music. No, come on, fuck off. No I'm way. pretty sure they used the, that music for Tenru, and he should be in the Hall of Fame at some point. All right, now, now you're just talking crazy. We're going to put Katow in the fucking Hall of Fame, too? I didn't say Katow, I just said Tenru. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with Tenru, I disagree with Orient Express. Fine. Kabuki? Isn't Kabuki already in? I think he is, actually. Maybe. Legacy Wing? Legacy Wing? Yep. Great Kabuki. Like the world class type shit. Great Kabuki is still with us. He's seventy five. Well, no one was questioning if he was dead. Well, I mean, you figured he's old enough. Uh, nope. He's in the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, but he is yep. not in the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, this this is so fucking racist. If you look under his his time in world class. He was a former NWA World Tag Team Champion with Chang Chung. What the fuck? What Everybody name? Chang Chung tonight. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody Chang, Chang Chung. Chung. <laughs> now, is that the guy's real name or is that like Fritz Von Erich going, hey, uh, you and Chang Chung, go have a match. Like, what the fuck are we doing? What if his name is Chang Chung? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. It, could it be? It, it could be, right? Be. Chang Chung is Kazuo Sakurada. No. Yep. Yeah. Chang what Chung? The, no, I just clicked on his fucking Oh, he name, was the man. Dragon Master. He was the Dragon Master. Also a good point. Yeah. He's dead now. He got Phone's off. ringing, dude. Phone's ringing, dude. He was also a former uh, sumo wrestler. <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. <laughs> He was Black Ninja, Chang Chung, the Dragon Master, Kendo Nagasaki. <laughs> Kendo. Not the Kendo Nagasaki. Chang Chung is the is the Kendo Nagasaki. Dude, I'm just telling you what his Wikipedia says. 
Maybe right, who, he's a Kendo Nagasaki. Who was Donna Chang? That's a, that's a, that's a blonde-haired woman from Long Island. She's not even Chinese! <laughs> I'm not taking advice from some girl from Long Island. <laughs> I was no... God damn, what a poor... <laughs> God damn. damn. You really down that old rabbit hole there, huh? Double T? Yes. Kazuo Sakur Sakurada <laughs> is fucking Kendo Nagasaki. Isn't that the one that was on Raw with his wife? Or am I thinking of somebody else? What? He was in ECW. No, which Japanese guy was on Raw with his wife? When? <laughs> I'm back in, I don't know, back in the day. Back in the day. Come on, dude. Yuji, are you talking about Yuji? No, uh, not Yuji. They got a uh, choppy, choppy pee pee guy? No, that's Mr. What's His Nuts. No, it was uh, a wrestling. Yes. Was... Thankfully, Yo, still have it. All right, let me ask you a question. I Googled Kendo Nagasaki. Yeah, and, and a some... bunch of different things came up. I know. Peter gotta... Thornley. Who the fuck is Peter Thornley? And why you does gotta... he have Kendo... KendoNagasaki.org? What the fuck is this? <laughs> you got to throw, scroll down. What or the put fuck, wrestling man? in there, too. Mm. Well, that would help. <laughs> oh, no. So he's not Kazuko Sakurada. It's a different person. It's a different dude. No, it's not. It's got to be. You're a different dude. Dude, no, this is fucked up. What is this? What, what are we doing? Then this is this is not the guy that wrestled in WWE. No, you're thinking of Peter Thornley. No! It was an Asian dude, and he had his wife there with him, and she wasn't around for very long. What what are we are we talking about? Kendo Nagasaki? Maybe. No, this is the guy we're just looking at. No. I understand. So you're just looking for the dude who showed up in WWE. Japanese guys in WWE. Let me see. Here with his go. wife. Yeah. <laughs> was, Fuck wasn't off. Val Venus trying to, wasn't Val Venus trying to bang? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Chappie, Chappie it, pee -pee's wife? No, that was, that was Mr. What the fuck was his name? That was the Yamaguchi's Yamaguchi? son. It was, no, it wasn't Mrs. Yamaguchi. Uh, no. Fuck. God right. damn it. It's, it's not Nakamura. No. It's not Hakushi. No. Okay. He was a dude like in the 90s or, yeah, it was like the late 90s, early 2000s. He's a known dude. Like, he's known. Like, he's famous. And he oh, showed okay. up in the WWE. Yes. And his wife was with him. And he was oh, with his wife. Uh, Kenzo, Kenzo Suzuki? That's the dude. That's, That's got to be the dude. Good that fucking was, that pull, was dude. Way, that was like mid two thousand, early two thousands. Yeah. Like I always forget, always forget his name. He was a giant. Always, he was a big boy. Yeah. He was a big guy. Yeah. Kenzo Suzuki. Yeah. And I'm his looking, wife. I'm looking for that. She had like uh, the, I don't know what they call them, the kimono, and then she had like a white face. A geisha. Yeah. White face. A geisha, if you will. So, uh, bah, bah, bah. he was in OVW 2004. Originally, Suzuki was scheduled to debut on the Raw brand of May under the ring uh, name Hiro Hirohito. Hirohito, yes. He was to be presented as the grandson of Emperor Michi Hirohito, who ruled Japan during World War II and a Japanese patriot who held anti-American views who wanted revenge on Americans for the atomic bombings at Hiroshima and oh Nagasaki. However, Great the gimmick idea. was dropped after the first vignette aired on April 29th, 2004 edition of Monday Night Raw after Suzuki's wife, Hiroko, reportedly told Vince McMahon directly that it would be extremely offensive in Japan and cause big problems for the company doing future business there. Big problems. Big problems. Oh, God. Suzuki also told Bruce Pritchard that Emperor uh, Hirohito was not as beloved in Japan as they thought. Wow, what is it with them with World War II references, you know? Can I find this fucking vignette? Which is, I didn't realize they dropped that that quickly. I could have swore it ran longer than that. Well, they didn't drop well, the character. They just Yeah, he that. was still there. They dropped that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah he won he the went tag team titles to be, with uh, the Dupree. They were moved to SmackDown. He was given the name Hiroko. Uh, or he was given his name... Given. Suzuki used his given name and Hiroko as his valet. Together, they made television debut. Uh, he defeated Scotty Tuati, feuded with Billy Gunn. 
Uh, he beat Gunn at the Great American Bash. Uh, Suzuki, Rene Dupree, and Booker T beat John Cena three on one. He, he was around for 2004 to 2005. Yeah, there you go. Kenzo baby. Thank you for that pull, uh, KJG. Yeah. <laughs> I got a poll for you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the whole so the Hall of Fame sucked. That's where we're leaving. This. I did not. I am not a fan. Sorry, I won't watch it. I don't think it'll be part of my WrestleMania weekend watching. I'll never Great. stop watching it. Okay, <sighs> give yourself fucking a cookie. Never, fucking never Yay. Stop it. Uh, anything from NXT stand and delivery you guys want to mention? I don't want to take a deep dive. Yeah, well, what's so her name's show. titty fell out. <laughs> oh wait, so what? what yeah, what's her name's What's her name's titty fell out? Who? There's a lot of uh, what's her names on that. Yeah, show. I um, don't remember. I don't remember who it was. Thea Hall, no, no, no. Roxanne no, no, Perez, no, no, no. Lea Jane, Thea Hale. Somebody, somebody in that match. I forget which one it was. Montez Ford. The Joe screen, Casey. The screen cut to black, and I was like, ah, so much for the titty. I don't know. Yeah. It was so Look. bad that my balls were black. <laughs> Look, great, great. I thought it was a great show, top to bottom. Fun um, show. The tag match kicked things off, and uh, man, I, I never thought I think Braun Breaker and uh, Baron Corbin were, would be such a great tag team. Oba Femi looked Star. great. Dijak stole the no. fucking show there, though. I know he lost, but he looked great. I love the, um, the, the, the angle that they when they picked him up with the chokes, like just grabbing him up by the throat, like the production angle of just him, like all you see is his hand and just picking him up it was awesome. Uh, Roxanne Perez as a heel is going to be awesome, and they they unveiled Julia's there, mm-hmm. so that's going to be huge for NXT. Uh, Julia Dra- Gulia Dragon off uh, had a fine match with Tony D'Angelo. I think the bigger story is the split between the family. It seems like there's a lot of dissension there, and then yeah. uh, well, of course, Trick and, I mean, Trick and Carmella was great. Mm-hmm. A great, great event. Really enjoyed yeah. it. No, I'm with and, you. And uh, hell of a turnout, too, for it being as early as it was. Yeah. yeah I mean, look, you're there. What are you going to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. New, uh, the the Dra- Dragunov really, like, stood out to me in it. Like, he's always stood out, and he's their NXT champion. He was so freaking good. He, he put himself out there so well. And and, and cr- credit to D'Angelo, too, man. Like, he, he held his own. He's a great yeah. worker. Like, he's yeah. a really good worker, saddled with a gimmick that you either like or you don't like. It's just, he's really good. And I, I, I love Dragunov's, his finisher that Matt mentioned earlier, that that like headbutt slash elbow, and he did through the table. Like That was just like super cool, and I love the show. Yeah, the uh, it was a fantastic show. Dragunov's insane talented. Braun Breaker's a stud. Oba's a stud. Uh, the... What the fuck was it? It was oh Joe Gacy. The Joe Gacy character is really growing on me. I it's, love Joe Gacy. Yeah, I, I I wasn't really in on it at, at first, but it, it's really grown on me. And it was it was a fantastic event. The the thing with Joe Gacy is that they've tried to redo him so many different times. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like now he's back to what he was when he was on the indies mat and like CZW oh, with, with the, the mask. mask. Yeah, and all that stuff. So like and then the whole thing where they turned the camera upside down, so the mask is actually up like like it's it's it, it's good and he deserved to win yeah so if you haven't seen it and you have time like check out stand and deliver um you know this this whole weekend has kind of got like i'm looking forward to watching raw why i process this when i'm done uh you know i'll try and watch nxt um because i'm just interested to see the fallout they're gonna bring in a new women's north american title which i know tony loves titles tournaments baby but you know what? Like NXT, NXT went through like a weird place where they became like what NXT 2.0, and they changed mm-hmm. everything. And I feel like this this show in particular is kind of giving them that identity that NXT is known for. Yep. Yeah, it's it's definitely bringing it back for sure. Uh, and it was WrestleMania week, so you would assume that WWE would uh, have a stranglehold on all the headlines. But uh, good old TK said, "Hold my beer." Um, so last week during the show, there was a bunch of cuts, um, and nothing, nothing out of the ordinary outside of Anthony Henry. Some of those people you didn't even realize were still on contract. Um, and then 
you know, as the week starts to progress, uh, CM Punk, obviously his interview Monday picked up more and more steam. Um, and we got to see a little more than we had last week when we did the show. So, uh, you know, and look, there's going to be CM Punk side and there's the there's going to be the AEW side. And somewhere in the middle, you would assume, is the truth, right? And CM Punk did say a lot of things in his interview, um, you know, like maybe you shouldn't be so concerned with a five-star match when half the building is empty. Um which if he's, you know, look, if it's true, if he's taking shot, I, I don't think he's wrong. Like, you can love him or hate the dude, but CM Punk came up. He's like one of the last dudes that came up through the wrestling industry where he, like, was driving a thousand miles in a weekend just to make fucking podunk towns. Like, he put the time in and he added, like, he's one of the biggest draws in the wrestling business, whether you like him or not. Like, Point in case, we talked about Mania. Drew McIntyre beat Seth Rollins, and 70,000 people chanted for CM Punk. Mm -hmm. And he was just fucking sitting on commentary. So he had a lot to say about the AEW. And, you know, Cody, it's in the notes, thank, thankfully, to Brundon. Cody said he doesn't see Tony Khan that way. Whatever. So uh, Tony Khan made these cuts. Ring of Honor at a show Friday night. Mark Briscoe beats Eddie Kingston, and we could talk Supercon of Honor in a little bit, uh, but he paid for Leonard Skinner's Give Me Back My Bullets. Uh, perhaps you shouldn't say, after you just cut a bunch of talent, that you paid about as much for one wrestler's <laughs> salary for the year for the song. Um, and then the boys who were cut, they went and they shared all the, the text messages because the rumor had been put out there that they got fired for not showing up to work when the text messages clearly show it was a miscommunication or lack of communication with whoever handles travel for a Oh, video. big fucking surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then yesterday morning, it's announced that Wednesday night on Dynamite, they will be showing the footage of the fight backstage between Jack Perry and CM Punk. No, I thought it was the all. I thought it was the all in stuff, wasn't it? Or is no, it the I don't know. They can't show brawl in. Yeah, whatever. No, they it's so they're showing the it's great. It's the Wembley. It's the great. Wembley yeah. stuff. So try to garner ratings by showing footage of the guy that you fired, who's a big fucking star on your competition. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Fucking bravo. You know what, man? Like, look, you like AEW. If you're out there, that's fine. It's really fucking hard to defend this shit. It really is. I don't care what you fucking got to say about CM Punk. It's hard to defend these fucking nonsensical plays, man. I, if you're talking about strictly from like a ratings type scenario, I think people might watch if. Yeah, you know what they're going to do? They're going to watch this. They're going to go, what the fuck is this other hour and 45 minutes around it? And they're going to have even less people viewing <laughs> no, next week. Agreed. Agreed with that for sure. It uh, it reeks. It reeks of grasping at straws and desperation to me. Yep. It, Hardcore it jealousy. really does. It's, it's, it's fucking. It's, it's. It's borderline depressing. Now, Mock Spot makes a good point. If it might be a spoof video, and if it is, shame on them even more. No, I from what I've read, it's a hundred percent going to be the real footage. They have all. Yeah, no, from yeah, to, I'm with KJG. My understanding through what I've read is, Tony Khan's been mad about this for a while, and he's wanted to release this footage before. It also flies in the face of. Man, what they had Adam Copeland do Wednesday night to open Dynamite, coming out <laughs> with this. I mean, look, man, like, you, you, you got, like, the ratings aren't increasing. The attendances aren't going up. Like, just let it fucking go. There ha I, it's so hard for me to believe that there's not one single fucking person in that company that says, it's over and done with, man. Let's just move forward. You have such a top tier talent of people in Unreal. AEW. Like, why can't you just let it fucking go? You know how you prove CM Punk wrong? And you shut all these people up? You go out and you give us fucking 12 weeks of fucking great TV, no bullshit, no drama. Get away from that stigma. Fill the fucking buildings. God damn it. During fucking Raw, uh, WrestleMania last night, they had a fucking commercial. WWE is going to be in 25 new cities. AEW, like, 
across the bottom. We're going to be here next week. We're going to be here in two weeks. Tw you, you're, I, 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 like you brought Jeff Jarrett in to be in charge of live events. You should be fucking touting your schedule months in advance. I, I just literally, all signs point to it just being Tony Khan, not knowing what the fuck he's doing. You could have all the smartest people in the world around you to try to help you, but when you're the boss and when you see it your way and you can't let other people in and try to help you when you clearly don't know what the fuck you're doing, I feel like I don't put the onus on the people, the smart people that he has because, listen, at the end of the day, they have a job. They're making great money. They're doing what they do. They probably have brought suggestions to Tony Khan, and Tony Khan is like, nope. I'm smarter than all of you. He like he literally is everything that he hated. He's Vince McMahon. I know what you want more than you do. And you don't. You really don't. AEW was so good at some point. And somehow it went off the freaking rails. And it's just, not that it's bad, but it's just, uh, I could go with that. It's not must-see at all. And it's Tony Khan. It, look, it's hard. Look, man, like, but you have all these people, like, buy, like, Fucking Adam Copeland was in WWE for fucking 20 years. Yep. He's buying this poor guy has to go out here and cut this fucking ridiculous promo. Is there anything in the notes, Matt, by the way, behind that promo? Is there any like backstage news or was that just Edge being Edge? Like, was that planned by Tony? Was that, do we know? Or was mean, that just... If you, if you believe what's reported, like this was like done to counter the punk interview. Which is so silly because that wasn't even on WWE programming. That was on an independent podcast. Yeah. Like, come on, man. What do you like? Oh, catch it. Look, man, it caught again. Yeah. It catches it's CM Punk. He's gonna catch head because CM Punk's a draw. Dude, they had Adam Copeland. They were what were they in Toronto? And like he did no media like the week going into Dynamite? Like yeah. Like, you're not, like, great. Like, RJ City's funny, and he has, like, his UA. Like, if that's the only media that's fucking out there, like, you, Cash these guys. Check, son. It's, and then, like, FTR, there's video of them, like, Dax cuts another promo after the collision tapings, like. And so he's like, you know, we love this business, and we're we friends. We love and everyone. It's, if like, you guys only understood how big these fucking checks were. <laughs> I don't like you got they gotta just look and they can't look and look I know, at like, all this money <laughs> and it just keeps coming we ain't drawing shit we ain't selling merch but god damn it our pockets is fat <laughs> like the bucks are going to bring jack perry is going to be part of this new elite okay right who gives a fuck <laughs> <laughs> so they would like Again, it doesn't move the needle, though. We want Marco. <laughs> we want Marco. Where is it's, he? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, and it's like, oh, yes, like people will be like, oh, you're going to pop a rating. That's great, but you're not going to keep people. People aren't aren't staying there. They must already have but a, a deal. You don't understand. It's not about ratings. Just watch wrestling. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen at AEW. Motherfucker's got too much money, and until daddy cuts him off, he's just going to keep on spending. And you know yep. what? All these guys, I don't know about you, man, but if I had a job there, I wouldn't be bitching and moaning that I had to work one day a week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would Dude, not be bitching. I would be like, what do you need me to do, TK? I'm, I'm here for you. What do you need, brother? You need me to dive over the ropes when somebody steps on my toe? You got it, boss. <laughs> the only person that actually remotely moved the needle was CM Punk. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And they then, gave like, him his own show, and he was yeah. like, this ain't going to work. And they gave it to him, and he's still outdrawing the fucking Wednesday show. And and if you want to talk about like a run, like a series of shows, Sting, hit, going into his last match, kind of moved the needle a little bit in terms of production, in terms of attendance, and in terms yeah, of... Yeah, well, he sold tickets. Crazy. People wanted yeah. to see him because they gave a shit about Sting. And that's it. And other than that, like, I love MJF. MJF's the star. He could probably move some tickets, too, probably, MJF. Honestly, Young Bucks, FTR for these titles, I really couldn't give less nope. of a shit. Nope. It's, it's you know, the you break. I don't know, man. Like, you, you can't go out and say, like, we're, we're doing budget cuts to save money, and then 
three days later get to, at the fucking uh, scrum be like yeah i paid like a wrestler salary to use give me back my bullets by leonard because he don't give a like, fuck he, he don't care but just don't say that the aesthetically it's, it's a terrible fucking look okay so he, i thought he's i thought he came out and said that he did it to not deprive people of working other places like to make other paydays in in terms of uh Oh. Yeah, but half of his roster works in other places anyway. That's yeah. a good point. That's you why know? I was. That's why. Fucking that's John why... Moxley's getting beat by some fucking karate dude in a fucking tournament in his hometown. Like I think Shayna Baszler beat him. Probably. Oh. Whatever. Fucking stupidity. Uh, it's just uh, you know it's. Uh, it's just like the whole like. Dude, it's WCW. Like it's mm-hmm. li- like at, like. Sammy Guevara is getting in fist fights with Andrade, you know, fucking and they paid Ricky. Andrade to stay home. <laughs> yeah, like fucking Ricky Starks with the whole like I want to rape Sasha Banks thing like didn't happen in AEW, but then when it comes out he's under the AEW banner. Miro is hired by the company. He's cleared, he's never on TV. Chris and, Jericho and, is being a, alleged of of being a sexual deviant, but he still gets put out on TV every night every week. <laughs> fucking lion, fucking lion hook. They could brawls after pay per views like it's ridiculous. Yep. And then Cash you, them checks, bitches, right? As a wrestling, it's just crazy that like wrestling fans like hear CM Punk talk about this and they're like, "Well, you're an, you're just a, you just hate AEW." Yep. But it's like, no man, this is fucking embarrassing. Like, is this supposed to be professional wrestling? And yep. I'm sure this shit's been going on for fucking seventy years. But it's I mean, it's never more in front of our faces every fucking day, and it's always AEW. Because wrestling isn't real, bro. It's all a story. It's all with a show. Ex- we care about what goes on behind the scenes. With the exception of Drew Gulak grabbing Ronda Rousey sweatpants. Yo, what That's kind of shit? I, is when that, I saw bro? that, oof. But listen, Cody left, right? Like I, I've always claimed that that's been like the doubt since he left. Yep. It's been absolute chaos there. I said when when he left, they they lost their direction. They lost their heart. Yep. Uh, right. And then CM Punk was there mm-hmm. and saw what was going on. And despite his reputation prior, I mean, he's still one of the most respected guys in professional wrestling. He <laughs> was like, "I'm I'm out. I'm done." Like, come on, man. Like, it's it's just not like Sean Spears decided to walk away, and now he's in NXT. Mm-hmm. Which is fine. It is what it is. Jade Cargill decided that I have more opportunities somewhere else. Well, she said in an interview with Busted Opens Saturday that she's 31. She doesn't have all time to wait for a company to to grow. She needs to be somewhere now where she could be a superstar. She's going back to WWE. Back. (laughs) Oh, wait. Was she in developmental ever? Oh, I thought you were talking about Sasha Banks. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Money. No. Oh. Money, oh. so pay it's me just... more money. Oh. And you know what? Like, <laughs> look, man. Like, CM Punk is not. There... We'll never know the truth, right? You could pick a fucking side, yeah. but there's a lot of shit. Like, you know, I don't think it's outlandish to think that there's people that are more concerned with getting a fucking five star match from a dude who's never taken a bump than selling out arenas. Like, I think that's a real thing. It's outlandish. <laughs> Eric Bischoff says that every week. Like it's almost like borderline fact that Tony Khan literally takes advice from Dave Meltzer. Like literally, like <laughs> watch the cage the match head. ratings. Watch the cage <laughs> match ratings. <laughs> you will suck my meat. <laughs> oh, that's, that's rude, Hogan. That's rude. And and then like you, like I got uh, super frustrated, and we can talk about this because you watch ROH, uh, Tony, uh, K- KJG. Excuse me. Jesus Tony's Christ. on Tony's on the mind because I know uh, Tony's going to be leaving us because he has some fatherly and husbandly duties that he has to take care of. Um, and he <laughs> duties to pre- too, regular yeah. duties. And he has to prepare for his day at work tomorrow. Um, so Tony will bid us a farewell, but he'll be back next week when we're joined by uh, Misa Kate. Oh, Misa Kate's coming in. Yeah, Good. Misa Kate. Me, miss. Me. <laughs> You got Misa it. Kate will be joining us. Yeah, and hopefully my internet's week. better. I don't know why it keeps like cutting out at weird times. Like the whole Damien Dragon thing. Like you got that earlier because I said it. Did you or no? Yes. 
Okay, because I didn't know. Like, uh, it was paused, and then all of a sudden you were talking, like, this cocksucker had to come in, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess he did hear me, but I didn't know if you heard me, because it was, like, paused for, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> wait, cocksucker, wait, cocksucker, wait! Wait, cocksucker, wait, cocksucker, wait! <laughs> Oh, that's going to be such a fucking fun thing to do every week. Yes, it is. It's just, it's just a different word in the middle. Nope. <laughs> so, Tony, we bid you. Wait, Tony, Tony, oh. before you leave, before oh, you, leave, gonna, you leave. Can you disconnect me? I bought the fat with, with you in mind. Hornets! <laughs> <laughs> but wait, all fucking night for Hornets. <laughs> Sorry, it, it's been a WrestleMania recap kind of night too, man. I guess. Of course, I biggest guess. show of the year. Well, he's still getting paid by Tony Khan too, isn't he? Where the fuck has he been? Yes, he is. Hornets. <laughs> All right, boys, enjoy the Ring of Honor talk. Oh, uh, there's nothing to enjoy about it. Oh yeah. well, whatever. Have fun. Later, See ya. Dude. <laughs> so to continue with the front, it, it's it's. It's frustration, right? And I think I said this last week when when we were doing the show. Like, we want wrestling to be great, right? Yes, sure do. Who everyone we want everyone to make money, everyone to have a job, everyone have uh, to to be able to fucking live their dream as a pro wrestler and not have to go work at the fucking Gap or Chili's or wherever the fuck you work, right? So I thankfully my man Milwaukee Tom hooked me up with his Ring of Honor login because I ain't paying ten dollars for this shit. Really? Because I logged, I used your login. Bro, I canceled my shit a while ago. <laughs> Perhaps you did not. <laughs> I, I did. It's not showing up on my fucking credit card statements. I 100% used your email and login for to watch Ring of Honor. Unless I bought it. Check to see oh. if I bought it. I will have, <laughs> check to see if I bought it with your shit. I will have to check. Because <laughs> I 100% put your email <laughs> and, and password in the watcher. Well, I didn't. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh great. Matt's out. Matt's out. I killed Matt. That's that's because his fucking electric bill check bounced because he bought I overdrew his account. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. All right, what the fuck happened there? I don't know. KJG's watching ROH on your dime. Yeah. That's what's happening. That I, I don't I don't. I also build your landscaper, so come do, do some work on my lawn. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to. I'll, have to, I'll let you know. I'll check and I'll let you know. Yeah, I, of course. I, obviously, I'll pay you if, if I did. But I don't. I think didn't I get. Did. I didn't get a because, notification, so I don't know. Because there was an option saying, after I got it, it was saying, "Do you want to subscribe now?" And then it, the other thing was like, "Maybe later." I clicked "Maybe later," so I didn't pay for the subscription, but I watched the show with you. <laughs> With your stuff. I don't know. I didn't get an email, bro. So we're good. We're good. Um, yeah, I fucking canceled that like a month and a half ago. I thought uh, you did. I, I did. So like, I was. I just took a shot, and it would have worked. I will. Ch- I'll check. I will check on it uh, when we're done here. So t- t- uh, he gave me to Milwaukee. Tom gave me his login, and I knew. I knew what it was going to be. Right. It was going to be a good show because that's what fucking. Ring of Honor does. It's a talented company with talented people. Correct. Um, why you don't promote that your six man tag champions are going to be on the sh- the show defending the title against Minoru Suzuki, Lance Archer, and Alex Zane is beyond me. Um, why there's constantly fucking commercials for Collision? <laughs> yeah. Just aggravates like the f- open challenge, didn't they? Like yeah, but like yeah. at least say there's going to be fucking an appearance by this your six man champions. I think they did. I knew I, if they did it and they did it Friday and I missed it because I was working. That's on me. No, I'm not saying it's on you because the only reason why I know it is because I like what I read says that also advertised is so and so and so and so. I didn't necessarily hear it on a show. But I just assumed because I read it that it was advertised. So you could 100% be right, dude. 100%. So uh, it's neither here nor there, though. It's, it's just it's it's super duper frustrating because they put on a great show here, but then they're going to, right? You can't tell me we need to make budget cuts or we want to make budget cuts. Then you fly 40 fucking people in for a Ring of Honor taping. Stop 
four to five matches, a couple vignettes. The fucking TV doesn't have to be an hour long. You have such a fucking talented bunch of people. Why wasn't Ethan Page on this fucking show? Great question. I was actually going to ask you about him and what he's been doing on ROH. I don't know because I don't. I, I yeah. gave up my subscription. It, right. it, the results are Brendan sends the results every week. Like Dalton Castle and and Johnny TV right was fucking awful. It was fucking horrendous. It went on for way too fucking long. It's a battle without honor, so anything goes. He's got a hundred fucking boys. Then this fucking Paul Walter Hauser comes out. Oh, like yeah, I'm, like I get like it was just it's fucking stupid. I wonder it's if they stupid. gave it. I agree, but I wonder if they gave it so much time because to me that's like the story that's been told the longest. It wasn't good though. It was right. bad. It was bad. Billy Starks beating Queen uh Queen Ar- Amandala, whatever the fuck her name is. Awesome. Awesome. Athena retaining her women's championship. Awesome. Right. Mark Briscoe beating Eddie Kingston. Awesome moment. Fantastic moment. The tag title match. Great. Great. But guess what? I don't give a fuck because I watched the, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions lose every fucking week on AEW programming. Yeah. Whether it's Rampage, whether it's Dynamite, whether it's Collision. Stop putting these fucking teams over there. Yeah. So the only thing I didn't like about the Ring of Honor, the tag team title match was Wardlow's involvement. I understand like you have to get him involved, I guess, because he's... But like, what are you doing with Wardlow anyway? To the point where like he needs to be a, a team that doesn't get a lot of play anyway the infantry uh, right well like, adam cole told wardlow to protect the titles at all costs but yeah. that happened on aew yeah. tv <laughs> it didn't happen on ring of honor tv <laughs> right kyle fletcher lee johnson fantastic yes i think kyle fletcher is a fucking stud but he's way. a fucking stud and he hasn't been around because he had visa issues fine whatever but like you have all like Jack Cartwheel in a fucking boy's mask and he comes out and he does a... I don't give a shit. I just don't fucking... Like, it's so... I fucking love Ring of Honor. Love, loved, whatever. Those three letters mean so much to me. Right? I've made so... There's so many fucking memorable trips and shows that we've watched and people that we've met. The goddamn WWE champion we met through Ring of Honor and he did our fucking show and now Punishment Martinez is the fucking champion in the WWE. Right, and I don't. We don't get that opportunity if it's not for Ring of Honor. But this is like, it's fucking AEW dark, man. I can't. I I can't. It's just, it just makes me so it, mad. Oh. Let me ask you this: Is this? And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm l- legit asking for a comparison. Is this as similar as to how you feel about WWE's ECW? This is worse. <laughs> It's absolutely so fucking bad. Look, man, you want to you want to bring this champ you want to bring this promotion back, you want to make it mean something. Great. You got to use your your TV tapings to tape TV fine. But fucking don't tell me it's a fucking hamburger and hand me a cat shit sandwich. That's right. Uh, why should I care about the Ring of Honor tag team titles if they're losing every week on Dynamite? So either the Ring of Honor tag teams aren't good enough or or the titles don't mean fuck. Right? Eddie Kingston was the Ring of Honor champion. Uh, you, guess how many times he defended the title on Ring of Honor TV? <sighs> not, 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 I was going to say, not at one of their events. Not at an event, just on Ring of Honor TV. I, I would, I would be shocked if it was more than once. He won the title September when he beat Claudio at Grand Slam. Okay, yeah, that's right. None, none. Let's see. A proving ground match against Serpentico doesn't count because it's not a title match. He defended it on Dynamite and Collision. Uh, Honor Club, he defended the title one, two, twice. Two. What? Twice. What happened? So, like, they totally split up this quote-unquote triple crown. Oh, I can't. I wish I had an answer for you. So, where's the New Japan Strong Championship? Eddie Kingston has it. So, he still has that. 
But right. all, Mark Briscoe has the ROH and Okada has the Continental. Yes. What a fucking weird situation. It's a wow. fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. It, it, it's, it's very... It, it's aggravating. It's so aggravating. So if you had to give ROH Supercard of Honor like a letter grade, what would you give it as as a show? I'd give it like a B. Right. Right? Oh, so Look, man, these these guys and girls go out there, they bust their ass, they do great shit. Right? But but fuck, man, like I, I don't like I put out like a tweet Friday night, like I don't care about Paul Walter Hauser and someone's like, oh, Don't you know who he is? Don't you watch TV? No, man. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> He's the fucking guy that like called out Matt Cardona at the Emmys. Like, okay, like that works with Matt Cardona because it's Matt Cardona. No offense, it doesn't work with fucking Dalton Castle. Sorry, I, it doesn't, man. I, Matt, I had no idea who he was, and I'm a Matt Cardona fucking Mark, and I had no idea who he was. So it was like, so, yeah, he's undefeated in pro wrestling. He beat so and so at the fi. I'm like, I don't fucking care, dude. He's a fat fucking slob. He looks like me. He comes out with a stupid boy's mask on. And it, I wonder who, who could that be? Who could that be? What am I, fucking six? I don't know who it is. It's a fucking <laughs> asshole actor. He helped him beat Johnny TV. Great. Like, what? Like, they could have done so much better if they didn't have him come out with that mask on and just had him be himself in the crowd and maybe do like, oh, like so a, it was sl- fucking like a, a slap sec- like a slap thing and, and then he gets thrown to the ring and then he gets beat. Like you didn't have to put that whole charade up for no reason because I don't know who the fuck this guy is. No, it was all he fucking goes in the ring and then he's like he's like sneaking around like no he, nobody can see him. It was defu- it was fucking dumb. He he's not Snoop Dogg. He's not Pat McAfee. Like he's not a celebrity that can be involved in the match and you immediately know who he is. I don't he's know. He's not I speed. He's not yeah. <laughs> I, he's not the prime bottle, man. But again, I'm like I, I I knew I knew what was I knew it was gonna be a good show. But it's after. Like like I might use Milwaukee Tom's login and, and watch the TV this week, right? But is it going to be fucking fourteen matches that I don't give a shit about? Mm. Like I don't need to see fucking Commander and Black Taurus and Jack Cartwheel against fucking the Spanish announcing project. I don't care. It's fucking pointless. Don't fly these fucking guys to TV every week. Yeah. That was weird. The whole black. Uh, what is it, Beast Mort- Mortis? Oh, is whatever his there? fucking name is yeah. now. He can't use fucking Taurus. Taurus Hogan now. He's can't fucking Taurus Hogan. pisses me. It just fucking aggravates me. I don't I could ne- I don't know how to run a business. I don't know how to run a fucking wrestling company. I fucking would bet my life on it. I can do fucking better than this. I believe you could. It's, you're just too much. TV's fucking... No one gives a shit. People really want to sit through fucking 14 matches where two of them mean something and the rest of them are just dog shit. The crowds are fucking dead. Nobody cares. Yeah. And then even the two that mean something, how much do they really mean? They don't. Because nobody yeah. watches your shitty fucking weekly TV. I got to see what they put on. Is it in here? No, just Super Card of Honor. Let's see. I got I to know it was on the last fucking... Do it. Go for what it. Do I, what do I put in here? Search ROH TV. It, would it be in the notes? I have the notes. Right. Hey, all. No, nah, they weren't in the notes. Ah, Rundo. Well, he put in Supercard of Honor because it was. He sure did. Most in, most important. Absolutely. Uh, Love you, Brundo. Carry meth bags. Johnny TV. Let's see. I'm just trying to find somebody who was on probably the last TV taping. Honor Club 53. So what am I looking for? Sorry, don't mind me. What am I looking for? I <sighs> See, now this doesn't look bad. This is one, two, three, four. Five. When the fuck was this from? This can't be right. It's from February. Okay. Uh, I'd like to, I'm curious about that show too, by the way. What's that? Who was on the roster in February? This, it was Queen Aminata beat Taya Valkyrie in a quarterfinal match. Lee Johnson beat Mike Seidel. Commander beat Blake Christian. Taji Ishimori beat Jacoby Watts. And Johnny TV beat Dalton Castle for custody of the boys. Yeah. It, yeah who are no longer there. Um, well, you could just throw fucking a mask on anybody. Well, I, I agree. <laughs> 
but and it's funny that like, I actually like I picked Billy Starks in the picks for that match uh, against the Queen, but like once I saw like the Queen's entrance, I'm like, she might win this. Like I thought that they could. I literally once the match started, I was like, they could really go either way here, and I would would not be disappointed with either one. But then the whole big, how'd you feel about the Billy Starks uh, injury angle with the neck and all that stuff? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Okay. I thought it was good. I thought, you know, that they they kind of made it feel real. They didn't wouldn't go to the ring, but then like they put the neck brace on her and they moved her. So you're like, well, you know, you're not supposed to move somebody who's got a neck injury. Like yeah. it was just just enough until they got her up where you're like, you could see where this was going. Yep. So apparently the last. <laughs> Jesus Christ, excuse me. This can't be right. Okay. The last Ring of Honor um, online stream had one, two, three, four, five, only six matches. Okay. I like it. Okay. I might have to take back my, my words here. Thanks, did they take me. all? Did they? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew I thought about it as soon as I said I like it. Uh huh. Yeah. I like it. Uh, I wonder if okay. they tape okay. all three no, shows I'm, in one No, night? I'm going. So, okay. So it looks like, yeah, I don't know. It looks like they're taping. So like this cage match has this Ring of Honor taping number 58. It was taped in London, Ontario, Canada. And it featured matches from Massachusetts and from Quebec and Toronto. So different matches from different places, but then the actual Ring of Honor tapings that took place in Toronto, Ontario, as one, two. Th- no, see, this is wrong. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna oh. gonna have to. I guess I'm gonna have to go back and and watch. I guess I might have to watch Ring of Honor this week. I might eat my words. My rant may f- be uh, me sticking my foot in my mouth. No, but I feel like for the most part, you're right, though. Like, nine times out of ten, Ring of Honor is, like, 15, 16 matches. So. Right? Like, was it just because all those Ring of Honor tapings were in in Canada and they couldn't get everybody up there? I don't I know. Have, my gut tells me that they were just taping a lot <laughs> and decided not to do as much. I don't know. Because maybe they had to come back. Was they have to come back, like, early? I, I don't know. No idea. No idea, Matthew. HBWT, I mean. Sorry. Actually, he's NWO Matt now. Uh, I'm NWO Shawn Michaels. He was in the NWO for a hot second, right? He was. <laughs> the best so yeah, that's, of that's our Ring of Honor rant, and that's our AEW talk, and and this was another marathon show. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap up this this WrestleMania post show? I'm I'm good, man. Oh, you know what? I want to oh. throw out an, an MVP award for the the weekend to Lindsay Snow, who happened to have Narcan on her at an independent show where someone like OD'd and she saved their life because oh. she had Narcan. Well done. So props to past guest of the show, yeah, Lindsay former Snow. Yeah, guest of the show. Yeah, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, oh God, what was her? What's her handle on Twitter? It's like uh, Strong Style. Uh, ka, uh, Kaiju. Something. Kaiju Strong. Yeah. Very good. Very well. It's always good to have that shit on you, man. Just in case. I, I don't know if she's like a paramedic or something in her in her shoe job or anything. Like, oh, God, you know, in her, um, in her, her day job. But, I like uh, it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Horrible. Revive that addict. Revive <laughs> that dude. Uh, yeah. So, no, that's it, I think. I'm not trying to no, you're good. poke fun at addicts. At not just no, not nice, but yeah, congrats. Uh, good job, Lindsay Snow. Uh, anything else, guys? No. no. Are you sure you don't have? Are you sure, HK, oh. are, you sure you, are you sure you don't have anything? Uh, this fucking asshole left, and I gotta boy. fucking pull up the closing again. God damn it! No, I'm thinking. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Thanks. Think. Let me. All go. right. Is there anything that you want to talk about? The how about the rock? Oh, pants? wait, 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 wait. Yes, there is. I was oh. first. There's the first. I've been exposed to this Lil Wayne character. 
He can get the he, fuck him. I don't know. His voice annoys the shit out of me. He didn't need to be there. It was fucking stupid. I'm not a rap music guy, but if he's the greatest rapper out there, the whole genre can eat a dick. He's not anymore. He not sounds even a fucking bit. miserable. There was no and reason I, for him to be there. And he wasn't even like contributing to Jey Uso's music. It nope. was awful. It was horrible. It was in line with fucking Ice T's performance at WrestleMania 2000. Fucking useless. Oh, wait, when he came out with D'Lo and The Godfather? Yeah. Oh, I love that. It was fucking horrible. When's the last time you watched it? Uh, In 2000? Yeah. yeah. Put it back on. Put it back on. It's fucking miserable. I've said it before. Said it before on this show. He just walked in. Pimpin' it, pimpin' it, easy, man. Pimpin' it, pimpin' it. Shut the fuck up. No. And this little Wayne guy, he can. He, he looks like a shit. He can eat a shit. No. I mean, eat yeah. a shit. Ice T was gold, though. I'll, how dare you nah, besmirch the good he name? He can of eat Ice a tea. shit, too. That's for you. It's my jam. Eat a shit. Anyway, that's for you's not fucking singing Godfather and D'Lo to the ring. Yeah. They Listen, probably do that in SVU. Godfather and D'Lo as a tag team were lucky to have anyone wrap them to the ring yeah, at that point true. in their careers. It's yeah. also fair. Fair fair point. <laughs> fair point. Well, we're back. Let me do let's do this. We can still talk while I put this on the stage. There we go. Who do they we're back. Do they uh, wrestle Boss Man and Buchanan? Head cheese. Ah, uh, head cheese. Wait, I, no, no, no. 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 It was either TNA or Boss Man and Buchanan. I don't I recall. Uh, oh hey. 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 Ooh, hey. Well, we're back next week. Misa Kate joins us uh next week on the twenty second. We'll have uh handjob Kyle in the house and on the twenty ninth Ruby Raz uh will round out the month of April and we'll be uh talking all things wrestling next week. We'll keep a, a close eye on this AEW situation. We're all gonna go watch Raw after this and uh we'll be back next week with another humdinger of a show. Nailed it. I hate doing all this shit. I wish he would have stayed to do this. This is CHP double T doesn't like this. Where is it? Is it on the stage? Where is it? In the meantime, follow us on all social media platforms at Wizards Podcast on the Insta, on the Twitter, everything else on the old Facebook. Matt is looking at buttons and pressing buttons. Ah, there we go. This has been a production of the Shining Wizards Network. Executive producer is Manny Kratzo. Our producers are Danny Russoniello, Kate Hensler, Matt Garifo, Hi Fi, Tom, Ryan Schlong, Brendan Haney, Mike Peterson, Al Day, Kathy Hummer, William Mercier Jr., Michael Hammond, David Henry Bauer III, and Keith Parker. Special thanks to all our assistant producers as well. For everything Shining Wizards, visit ShiningWizards.com. And don't forget to listen to all the great shows of the Shining Wizards Network. Die, die.